Uh, we discussed two pieces of property for potential purchase. Uh, we asked the administration to go back and do some more digging and get some more information for us. And we had a discussion on some potential litigation. No votes were taken on any of the items. I'm on the wrong page. Give me a moment, please. Okay. First up, we have the consent agenda on our bills. Any questions on the bills? We have a motion to receive and place on file. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes six to one. Next up, we have a public notice from the CRMC for an application of Melissa Taylor and Manuel Lopes of 1184 Bogomarsh Road in Tiverton for the state of Rhode Island is set to create and maintain a three acre oyster farm using bottom cages. I have a motion to receive that and place it on file. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes uh, seven to zero. Next up, we have a request to fly the Armenian national flag on April 24th that we do every year. We have a motion to receive that and place on file. Sir. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7-0. And we have a review of the final approval of the plastic bag regulations ordinance with the changes that were requested by the council at the last meeting. Anybody have any questions or concerns on the changes? If not, we can receive in place on file and the ordinance will become law. Otherwise, we've got to pull it back out and put it on the next agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 6 to 1. With Mr. Kesson opposed. Now, sitting at the Board of License Commissioners, we have a public hearing for the transfer of a Class BV alcohol beverage license. The application transfer of Class B from r and 506 LLC, doing business as the Beach Comer, to KW Nelson Incorporated, doing business at Park Avenue Pub, 506 Park Avenue. Uh, we have a number of objections, which are standard, that all the bills be paid to their various suppliers prior to the transfer happening. Um, so, so moved. I will. Um, so moved with those uh, stipulations. Okay. I, I was going to say I'll second um, contingent upon the applicant's proof of payment well, we in have to, full we, of the debt. We debts. have to open the public hearing first. Uh, open the public hearing. Okay. So the motion is to go into the public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7-0. If there is anybody in the audience who would like to discuss uh, the transfer, either for or against, you have the ability to do so now. And because it's a public hearing, it's three times that I'll ask this. If anybody wants to come up and discuss, going once, going twice, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. Any discussion from the council on transferring of the license? Do we have a motion to transfer said license? Have, I'll make a motion to um, transfer the said license contingent upon the applicant's proof of payment in full of the debts to Rhode Island Distributing and McLaughlin and Marin. So second. Is that everybody? Um, Rhode Island Distributing, Rhode Grand, and no, those are the two no, those are only two left. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. Good luck with the new business. Hope you do well. Next up, we have an annual Victor's license for KW Nelson, uh, doing business at Park Avenue Pub. We have an amusement games license annual for KW Nelson, doing as business as Park Avenue Pub at 506 for one game. Uh, shall we make these contingent on the same payoffs? Yes. No. yes. Okay. Don't, Don't need to, but. But let's do it anyway. Okay. <laughs> so a motion to approve so moved. As, as soon as the, uh, the debts are paid off. Right. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. We have an entertainment license for St. Barnabas Church Annual Food and Carnival at 1697 East Main Road from June 22nd through 24th. Their Class F daily liquor license and also their victor's license for the same event. 
Uh, items one and two do not have a fee waiver, but item six, technically four, five, and six. Items four and six do not have fee waivers. So do I have a motion to approve those? Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. Next, we have the victor's license for a special event with fee waiver requests for St. Barnabas Church for the dates June 20th, 2nd to the 24th. Move to approve with fee waiver. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Seven to zero. Do we have a motion to adjourn from the Board of Licenses? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes seven zero. We have minutes to approve from the meeting of 2-12-18 and 2 18 Are there any questions on the minutes? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7-0. to zero. We have tax voucher voucher of 2018301-01. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7-0. to zero. We have the Town Administrator's Report. Mr. Rayner. Good evening, Mr. President, Town Council, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to recognize, uh, first off, I'd like to recognize and thank our DPW police, fire, and our emergency management agency for their work throughout the, the last nor'easter that blew through town. Uh, DPW responded to uh, 30 five uh, tree calls here on Prudence Island, here and on Prudence Island. Uh, the dog park suffered uh, significant damage when six fallen uh, trees uh, damaged the existing fence. Uh, there were three large trees that fell on Linden Lane that were removed. Uh, DPW was working to uh, do final cleanup along the wall and remove one stump uh, as weather permits. Additionally, uh, also in the Glen, uh, the Phelps House roadway to the Glen Farm Road in front of the Phelps House needs to be regraded. Uh, there are also some downed trees in the Glen Park Grove that will need removal. And the Town Hall and 70 complex signs were destroyed. And there was wind damage to the Glen Farm uh, indoor riding rink. Ring. Uh, we've submitted claims as appropriate to our insurance company, the Rhode Island Trust. Uh, regarding the storm damage, and DPW is working uh, either independently or with appropriate agencies to clear remaining debris uh, as uh, weather permits. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to announce that on March 5th, uh, I received a legislative grant check from the state uh, for the Portsmouth Veterans Memorial, i.e. the honor roll. Uh, the check will be used to pay for maintenance and upgrades to our new memorial. And I'd like to sincerely thank our state legislature, uh, our representatives, and particularly Senator Seventy, uh, for making this grant possible. At a hearing on Wednesday, March 7th, the State Traffic Commission discussed uh, the town's resolution regarding a road diet on East Main Road, uh, from Turnpike uh, all the way to the town line at Middletown. Uh, the hearing was attended by Senator Seventy, Councillor Ujifuza, uh, members of the school committee, and our police chief. The State Traffic Commission approved the town's request uh, to conduct a study, and they will report their findings uh, upon completion uh, to the town. And then, uh, with regard to the uh, council direction and motion to study and come back, uh, at a later date, uh, you gave me four weeks, so that would be the next town council meeting, uh, an ordinance regarding short-term rentals. Uh, a working group was formed to develop a draft short-term rental ordinance, uh, and we do intend to bring that draft to the council at the next town council meeting. The working group consists of myself, the town planner, the solicitor, the police chief, the fire chief, and the business development director uh, in addition to all the residents who appeared before the council that night. Uh, and like I said, we have developed a uh, draft. Uh, we intend to further refine that draft at our next meeting and then present that for your review at the uh, March 26th town council meeting. Mr. Ray, can I stop you real quick? Mr. Fitzmarsh, you got a quick question? I do, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Larry Fitzmaurice, 50 Kristen Court. Um, I looked for a... Uh, an agenda for this meeting was unable to find one. Did we issue one in some fashion or so? 
Correct. Place it's on I our website. One? Where was the agenda? It's on our website. Same place it's always been. Not tonight. The working group. The working, oh, the working group. Yes. No, there. It's a working group. It's not a, a committee. Sorry for starting in the middle of my idea. I apologize. <laughs> the working group. The uh, study group, as it's referred to in the notes. Um, it's an ad hoc working group. It's an ad hoc working group. So we're not going to have public meetings? It's an ad hoc working group that I was tasked to put together so that we could develop a draft ordinance for council review. When we bring that forward for council review, I'm sure that there'll be plenty of uh, public comment. Well, that's not the uh, question I had. Is it the council's um, intent, Mr. President, that this be a closed meeting system or a non-open meetings? Uh, you guys designated the, in the four individuals to be members of this committee in my reading of the rules. That makes it an open meeting requirement. We designated Mr. Rayner to establish a group to study this and suggested that the four people who made the complaints be asked to join it. Yes, I don't know I if that makes it a, a formal committee or not. I don't no. believe well, so. <clears throat> it's, it's, an, it's an ad hoc working group of town staff and uh, in which we invited the council, invited the, the members of the neighborhood or the neighborhood residents in the town that, that were yeah. interested to come. Not and necessarily, stay, but and to late with their thoughts. Okay. It, it's, uh, but okay. it's really an ad hoc working group of staff. So, so I understand that there it's will not, not a public be public body. There won't be any uh, you know, agendas for this uh, working group. Not for the working group itself, but there will be full discussion of any ordinance change here at the council. No, I would expect that. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Mr. President, sure. we, got, we got an email, I think, forwarded from the town administrator sometime this week. Um, so, Mr. Pavel? Pavel. Pavel? Yeah. It's on the agenda. Yeah. He was late coming to the table. I think you forwarded it to us. He had a complaint that he had a complaint that he, that he wasn't being represented properly or something, mm -hmm. or his opposition to what was talked about. Yeah, that's yeah. You forward. He's he's the property owner that Miss Panaggio yeah. lives next oh, door yes. to. Yeah, yeah. I did forward that to you just for your information, and we'll take okay. his comments. Uh, it'll all be included. And like I said, I mean, all we're doing is if the council direction was develop a product that you could review. Uh, we will do that, and once that's uh, on the table for your review, uh, I'm sure we'll get plenty of public comment. Thank okay. you. Item number five. Um, with regard to our search for a new finance director, uh, unfortunately our finance director will be leaving us uh, due to uh, personal matters. Um, the applications for the finance director position were due uh, this past Friday on March 9th. The opening was advertised via uh, Rhode Island League of Cities and Towns, the International Community Management Managers Association, uh, the GFAO, this is uh, a government finance accounting uh, organization, um, Rhode Island State Government website, town website, indeed.com, LinkedIn, Providence Journal, and Newport Daily News. Uh, we received 55 applications. And the HR director and I will uh, begin reviewing those applications this week, uh, and we will start arranging interviews for the most qualified candidates as soon as possible. With regard to the police station uh, construction project, milestones uh, since my last report, uh, now that the foundation walls are complete, uh, they, the contractor has begun installation of underground utilities, and slabs are being uh, prepped for installation. Total construction billings to date are $1,161,000, uh, which is under budget for this point in the project. And an updated critical path schedule has been submitted to the town and the architect, which confirms substantial completion, a, the substantial completion of the new building uh, in October of 2018 with demolition of the existing, the existing station to immediately follow. The contractor acknowledges that they have lost several weeks due to winter and unsuitable soil conditions, and as reported earlier, they have resequenced some planned activities, including delaying the steel uh, delivery until mid-March, 
and they plan on increasing manpower to recover lost time. Overall, the project is going well, and there are no significant uh, construction or budget issues to report. And then lastly, I just want to report uh, that due to the weather conditions being forecast for tomorrow, uh, we have issued a parking ban until 10 o'clock Wednesday morning, and town hall and the transfer station will be closed tomorrow, as well as the, uh, the school system. That concludes my report, Mr. President. I'm going to assume 12 inches of snow is not going to help the uh, police station construction, huh? No. <sighs> have built, built, built a dome over it. Any questions for Mr. Rayner? Um, Ms. Bader. Uh, the damage to the indoor riding rink? Yeah, uh, we've made, we've issued, uh, we've executed uh, temporary repairs to the roof. Uh, we've submitted a claim to the Rhode Island Trust. Okay, so what, uh, I was just going to ask what It was what a damage happened. to the roof. Oh, was, was it there a hole in the roof, or is it just yeah, like there's, there's panels to the roof. Missing? There's no shingles. Yeah. These are big yeah. panels. Panels, yeah. Right. Yeah, the wavy corrugated panels yeah. and some yep, of them yep. damaged. Okay. So there's not a hole in the roof? No. Uh, right. Well, there was, but okay. not now. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you, sir. We have uh, resignations and appointments. We have a resignation from the Glen Farm, Work Glen Farm Working Committee of Mrs. Is it Bainon? Andrew Bainon. Bainon. Motion to receive, receive and place in the file with address. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7 0. And a new appointment to the Harbor Commission for Mr. Commons. Motion to accept uh, application of Mr. Commons and place him on the Harbor Commission. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. Old business number one update on mitigation efforts uh, for flicker and noise issues from the wind turbine. Uh, Mr. De Pasquale was called into the Emergency Operations Center uh, to monitor the wind activity with the turbines that he has scattered throughout the state, so he is not here this evening. Uh, he did produce a written response to different uh, complaints that they have had, which I, we literally just received at about 5.30 this evening that I will ask the uh, town clerk to place on uh, the website for everyone to read. There have been four complaints. Um, as a council, our job was to hopefully provide the conduit so people could have these discussions between the turbine operator and themselves to mitigate any issues. Um, but as of right now, that's about as far as the council can go until there's any updates. Like I said, there's four documented complaints to um, Wind Energy Development, or WED, at this point in time. Yes, sir. Anthony Oshetsi, 36 Education Lane. I did call twice, and he did not call me back. Okay. Just so you guys know, okay. he's not returning phone calls, okay. as far as I know. Okay. Anybody else? John Vegas, 259 Sprague Street, Portsmouth. You, um, I, you are documented. Yes, I had okay. several complaints. I did yeah. meet with Mr. DePesquale on Friday after uh, repeated uh, scheduling um, and not showing. Um, he has several people. I'm not sure why another wasn't able to show up tonight because um, the plan was for him to discuss um, mitigation solutions that he was to provide for you. So I'm. <coughs> I'm feeling like uh, the, in general, um, his responses are unreliable, and um, I, I'm not pleased that he hasn't provided an, another opportunity. Do we expect him to return to the next? He won't meeting? return back to the council. Uh, mitigation efforts should be led. We can't force him to do any mitigation. Of course. Um, so mitigation for your personal property should be directed between Mr. DePasquale and Wind Energy Development and yourselves. I think I'm unclear on whose windmill this is. It is wind energy developments. And so mitigation is not to be... Um, it is to be done by wind energy development, the owner of the wind turbine, not the town. And how does the town uh, provide... Uh, I feel I have no leverage with Mr. DePasquale. 
and the uh, comments that you offered uh, last council um, or the sentiment to say I would like you to come back next week and I would like you to have met with the folks um, I felt like that was uh, the impetus we needed to get response and um, for the most part it, he was responsive um, but I'm feeling like this is being cast off as you're on your own is that the case yes not that you're on your own but your individual property rights are being if you're thinking they're being infringed on it's between you and the owner of the turbine and not the town because we do not own the turbine that's very disappointing on the land right you allowed to do it. Mr. Gavin, you want to comment on this? No? Not really. Okay. Okay. Um, is it in my best interest to um, request that the town hold a meeting? I'm not sure of the procedure. I could contact the folks offline at, you know, at another time, but um, I feel like there is not a, uh, a proper avenue for um, for fielding complaints when you say go to wind energy the um, best the best avenue yes, sir. for everybody who is local within who has complaints is to set up if you want to have a group meeting or if you want to have these individuals to contact mr. De Pasquale and the wind energy development and ask them to have either a group meeting with yourselves or you can do it as of this point it's been like I said four individuals who've contacted and now five who said he hasn't gotten a response I would choose a group leader and ask Mr. Um, De Pasquale to meet you either as a group or individually because everybody's everybody's sentiment is the same but your your remedies may be different thank you Evening, Mr. President. My name is Dave Schuler, 48 Spring Street. Uh, I was a little taken aback by your comment there, but let me go through my uh, information. When the initial turbine was installed, it was 39 feet shorter than the one you have today. At that time, I know there were other people who had initial problems. I didn't have any problems on Spring Street. No flicker, no nothing, because it was low enough. When the 39-foot tower went in, additional tower went in, which was land approved by the town, uh, authorized by the town, siding boards approved it through the town, uh, to put it at that location, I feel there was not enough work done with the neighborhoods after the 39 foot tower went in, the additional 39 footer. I notified the town back in February of 2017 that I had an issue, and I was told at that time that there was nothing I could do until after 31 December of this past year, and then when the tax assessments were available as far as taking uh, that route. Um, I am getting both noise from the defective bearings, not from the the fans or the blades blades themselves. It's from a defective bearing, and I'm also getting flicker uh, year-round, but it's mostly in the summertime. Uh, to the point, there are several rooms in my house I can't even go into because I start getting headaches. Uh, this may sound a little crazy, but uh, it is true. Um, I feel that the town, by putting the turbine at that location, has violated the noise ordinance of Portsmouth with several of the town's people. That company is outside of Portsmouth. They come in here, they install a, a windmill, they collect the energy fees, and now they're even selling the energy to people outside of Portsmouth. And uh, then they leave, and we're stuck with it. 
going directly to the company, I can tell you right now, if I was that person, I'd just look every one of these people, including myself, in the face and say, what are you going to do about it? There's a damn thing we can do about it unless the town's behind us. And it is a product of the town, no matter what you say. Thank you. Thank you. David Souza, Ports of Rhode Island, 25 Lowell Drive. Um, I came in a little late, sorry about that. But from my understanding and what I've read, because you guys accepted a dollar a year for rental fee of that piece of land, you are responsible. You are the landlords. So you can't say you're not responsible. You're the landlord. Everything falls on the landlord. So if there is a problem, just like I'll, I'll use, I have apartment house and my tenants are making all kinds of racket. The police will go over there and tell them to stop. But if they, if they continue or if they do something that they're not supposed to be doing, the landlord is responsible for anything that happens on that property. So you guys are responsible for what happens on that property. Because <coughs> as soon as you accepted that dollar. Now if you didn't accept no money, then you wouldn't be responsible. But since you're collecting money, which is a dollar a year, which I can't understand how we lease a piece of land for a dollar a year. Because if you have land for a dollar a year, I'll gladly rent some off you. I mean, that is that is an, a deal and a half. As a matter of fact, I'll give you two dollars a year. Because that, that is a great deal. I mean, I'll put up um, solar panels. Will not affect nobody, but it'll, it'll be on the ground. All I want is the piece of land. You do that, I'll do the solar panels. I'll there, give you two dollars a year. There, there was a lot more than a dollar a year into the agreement. Well, if you do the math and everything, I have done math and stuff on it, how, you, how it worked out. Would you guys pay in 15.5 and the rates what they call it, the, what they are right now, we are paying more than what we should be paying for electric. Correct. But that is the, the agreement you guys made with them, that we're not going to get into that. But as far as you guys are not responsible, yes, you are the landlord, as soon as you accepted that dollar. Okay. So what, that's why we are coming to you for help, to help us with this. There is a problem. We're not asking you to tear it down. Some people might be asking you to do that, but you know, we have to live there, so we have to, we have to work with the w turbine. But with this, this guy, we, he's not working with us. So that, that's our issue. I have, I've talked to him already three times. I don't know if he's here today. He's not. You, you missed that oh, he part. Didn't show he's, up? He's, he's, he's. Okay, I talked to him three times already yeah. about, about the uh, turbine and stuff like that. And it's just a coincidence, it hasn't ran for two weeks since after we had our meeting. It's and it's been pleasant, and I can probably, the rest of the people that live around there, they're probably getting good night's sleep like I am. I'm enjoying my, my, my living quarters. I get my sleep, I go to work in the morning, I'm not tired, and it's peaceful. And that's the way everybody's neighborhood should be after a certain time of, time of night. Because you wouldn't want me to go in your neighborhood, because I can go in there with a leaf blower, keep it underneath the desmos, and run it all night. Do you want to listen to that? That's what I listen to. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Sousa. Hey, Dr. Good, how are you? Uh, my name is Jack Flynn. I have a 20 level drive. Portsmouth. And a um, few problems I have is that when, the, the, when they're running it and when it's running, all you hear is like there's a, 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 fire, a plane going above you, right? And when, when I, I lived in Boston for years, in a local airport, when that plane went by, it was done with. This is just constant noise all night long, right, when it's going. When it's going. So in, in January, it was jammed up with ice or something like that. It was like on a, on a, a board, scra scraping for I don't know how long. You could still hear it in the house when you went in. And uh, it's just, it, the, the flicking is, 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 there's another thing. I've got to keep closing the blinds in the summertime. You know, you, you can't even open your windows because you have all these crazy noises up there. Something's got to be done. I mean, when, when you have the, when they have the smaller one there, right? 
uh, that w and they were going to put this new one in, I understand they were telling us that uh, we could we could tone this thing down during certain hours where the flickering wouldn't go, because it has to be a certain air, uh, a, you know, angle, okay? And uh, that never happened, all right? It was supposed to be sh shut down at certain times, uh, to quiet time, right? That's never happened. So they're just basically doing what they want to do, and they don't want to even face us. That's all I have to say. So I'm going to be done. I, I invite you all to make sure, if you haven't reached out to Wind Energy Development, to please do so. And work with Mr. De Pasquale and their group to mitigate your issues as best as they can, and you can. That's it, huh? That is it for now. Okay, thank you. All right, folks, if you would like to make a comment, I would ask you to please come to the podium. But we have leased out the property, and it is currently the responsibility of the developer and the turbine owner to mitigate the issues. If I may have another comment here. Sure. Dirt, speaking with Mr. Pascal this week, De Pasquale this week, um, he commented that um, mitigation is only up to him if he is advised to do so by your direction. He did not present any um, plans tonight, which he said to me and during the last meeting that that was a deliverable that he was going to bring this week, which were different types of plans that he would offer to the town to mitigate the issues. He's not done that tonight. You don't seem to be interested, and I'm not sure why, because it was definitely a different tone last meeting. Um, there was also a council member who, strangely absent at the moment, um, who uh, was also uh, um, commenting uh, in a similar manner to other folks here, not on the council, affected by this. Um, I'm disappointed, I must say, and curious to the silence and the change in tone this week with uh, concern about solving the problem. Um, I documented the problem as I thought it appropriate, but we're going to need some serious documentation if we're going to solve the problem. The problem is a condition that didn't exist when I purchased my house. I purchased my house in 2000. I knew it was a busy street. Traffic hasn't significantly increased. Roads deteriorated. It's been patched. But the windmill was built, and that changed the dynamic of living in my house. <clears throat> Three hours this month, I experienced significant flicker. Um, I documented it with uh, emails to Mr. Rayner um, and to uh, Green Energy. I think that's their name now. And um, I was acting under the impression that I was going to have an opportunity to have uh, a remedy. Um, what's been discussed often from uh, Green Energy and published in the newspaper is that the windmill can be turned off during periods of flicker. Um, on their website, and I quoted this in my email, um, it says that the windmill can be turned off during periods of flicker. Um, I talked to Mr. De Pasquale. He says that will not happen. He says that will not happen because it's not an economic viability. He says the windmill will be stopped during the um, wind speeds that are uh, determined to be um, less revenue generating. They're already doing that to mitigate the bat strikes or something. Uh, he had mentioned that in the last meeting, that uh, during uh, the evening hours when mosquitoes are up in the air, that uh, if the wind speed is below a certain range, that would generate those and not be economically viable, that they would uh, halt the windmill. Um, <clears throat> he also indicated that the town, in his opinion, was quite remiss in citing the location with houses to the north. And um, 
even the cursory amount of investigation will tell you that um, uh, sighting problems are always to the north of windmills in this hemisphere. Um, there is a, a number of um, uh, installations that have mitigation methods, and Mr. De Pesquale di discussed that in the last meeting, and I'm not sure why the council is not pursuing this. Of course, it's going to count, cost the town some money um, to have uh, these monitors installed that can mitigate flicker. Um, but the, uh, the issue that I, after speaking with Mr. De Pasquale and meeting here with you folks, the issue seems to be if the complaints are minimized enough, the town will solve the problem. That they, it's really unfortunate. I don't think anybody here is responsible for the failure and the poor contracting of the original windmill. However, we were in $1.8 million hole, and this is a fairly decent solution. It's a break-even solution over 25 years, in my and the general opinion of people who I speak with, that the best case scenario of this windmill is to break even. Um, unfortunately, there are a number of people that are affected by it. Um, I don't think that taking the windmill down and having the town absorb $1.8 million is a decent solution. But at the same time, um, having to deal with the three hours of uh, that just this, since the last um, since the last town hall meeting, um, I had three hours of very significant flicker, um, and I don't feel that. It is my obligation for someone who purchased the house prior to the changing of the zoning or whatever you had to do to put this up. Um, I'm a big supporter of the windmill. I think it's a great character of our town. I'm glad that we were able to solve our initial failing, failing with the, you know, the, the, the thing that we did. I think the town did a great job. Um, but the unwillingness to solve what I consider to be a minor problem and the minor problem is the total number of hours in a year. There's, there's a, uh, I can't help you with the noise problems, those are constant. But the flicker problem is definitely something that can be dealt with. And I think the town should make a better effort and be more genuine in their response to the concern that they are showing. Um, and I will uh, continue to uh, update the town with, uh, with my uh, concerns about the flicker as it occurs. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Roberts, go ahead. Peter Roberts, 80 Armard Avenue. I just want to point out what was said about why the gentleman isn't here. Right now, there is no winds. He doesn't have to be at any of the uh, wind turbines. And another thing, when the winds come in, all they do with these is put the brakes on. And he doesn't need to be anywhere. He'll get a call when they're down. So I don't believe what he said. I think he's not here because he doesn't want to answer these questions. And I find him to be very two-faced. Ms. Page, do you have a comment? Well, I just think we should let the citizens know that Mr. Kesson had to recuse himself because he's part of the, the problem. He's not part of the problem. He's affected, he's affected by party. the problem. So he had to recuse himself. He's an affected party. Um, yes. Denise Wilkie, 3140 East Main Road. Um, basically, if this was up in any of your backyards, actually, would it have gone back up if it was in your backyard? Yes. Do you enjoy, do you enjoy opening your windows? Spring, summer, and fall. Do you open your windows? Yes. We don't. We can't. And even with the windows shut, you can't sleep because of the noise. I can't believe that you can sit up there and look at us and say, we can't do anything about it. You allowed it. You allowed it. How can you say you can't do anything about it? He's a businessman. He doesn't care about us. He wants to make the most amount of money that he can make. He's not going to do anything. He lied to you. His lawyer lied to you. And in turn, we were lied to. This windmill is going to be noiseless. I went back and looked at all the meetings the DVDs of all the meetings. He lied. You believed it. 
or you knew it was lying and you just accepted it anyway. I don't understand how you can just sit there and go, not our problem, go away. He's not going to do anything. You know that. We know that. So where do we go? Where do we go from here? You're supposed to represent us and respect us. And I don't feel that at all. Um, can I hear from any of you why this even happened? Why what happened? Money. Why what happened? The second windmill. Because the town was in a position where we had about $1.7 million of a hole. Okay. To, to try and figure our way out of it was okay. either to put up a new wind turbine or take it down and pay the money and not do other things in town. So you put a bigger one, a more noisy one, more flicker. Why did you allow that? Because at that point, because at that point in time, I can't tell you why for anybody else that was on the council at that point in time, it was the best option for the entire town of Portsmouth. So screw everybody around. That is not what I said, Mrs. Wilking. Please watch That's your language. Folks, again, I'm going to ask you if you're going to say something, please come to the podium and identify yourself and say it. Please don't do cat calls. We can have a discussion without being rude about it. Please come up to the podium like Mrs. Wilkie is. Our son is an engineer for a windmill company. And he said right away, a bigger wind turbine with bigger blades, it's, it's not rocket science. It's going to be way louder. The flicker's going to be way worse. He said, how could anybody have believed this man's lies? How did you believe that? I just get a blank face. Yeah. David, how did this happen? For, my, <clears throat> for myself, I know we bought, a, we bought a lemon to begin with. I was not part of that initial decision, and the decisions made on the wind turbine are probably the hardest ones I've had to make on this council because I knew they would affect somebody. But as, as Mr. Hamilton said, we were put in a situation uh, where a turbine was installed. It should never, should never been installed in that vicinity where there are houses to the north that belonged at the middle school. That was turned down by the FAA, said it was in the, in the flight line. But we had people in the town, uh, citizens as I recall, that were pushing to be the first person to have a wind turbine in a, in a town. And that's how the thing was rushed through. There was a budget of $3 million. We found something that fit that bill. We bought a prototype and everything has gone downhill from there. Regarding the turbine that's there now, we bought a, a brand name product, product or the, the developer puts up a brand, brand name product called the Venzis turbine that's around the world as opposed to the AR, AARE or whatever that we put up initially. And um, the sell to me was we've eliminated the gearbox. The gearbox was what failed on the, on the initial turbine and we were told that it runs quieter, okay? I went over to the gentleman's neighborhood. He has a turbine in his neighborhood. He, he sells pieces of property to people that aren't reluctant to spend money for whatever reason there. They are in his neighborhood with a turbine behind his backyard, but all the houses are to the south. So they don't have the flicker, but I assure you that they still have the same amount of noise. Now whether they keep their windows shut and that's their AC is running continuously, they have hot, you know, forced hot air systems, so this you know, quiets this unit, I, I really don't know. But uh, when, I was, when I sat here and had to make a decision, it was um, in the best interest to have somebody come in and make an, who made an offer to take that old turbine down and then put up a new one. The new one had to be a standard unit that Vince's sells. It happened to be taller, and we made that decision here as well. But we were told that it would be quieter, okay? And some people would argue that it is quieter, okay? But you still, okay, still we didn't. Mrs. You know, Wilkie, can you we just gonna, keep everything to this direction? So okay. we weren't going to eliminate the flicker problem. So it was a decision that was made for the whole town. And I'm not throwing anybody on the bus here because you live in that neighborhood. Mr. Kesson lives far enough. He's also stepped out, and he's with you folks as having a problem. But that's how I came to the decision, now you asked me. Okay, did I make the right decision? Probably not. Why weren't there some rules imposed when this was approved 
Like, you do not run it at night. I mean, for one thing, no rules were imposed. And at the last meeting, he said, it's, it's making electricity in excess of his expectations. So you guys turned around and said, oh, that's great. Sell the excess electricity to the Port Authority or whatever it was. How about you would said, shut it down at night? No, Let that's not. Close. That's that's that's, that, not, what that's not what happened. He's not selling. He is. He is selling electricity. Electric. Electricity that we're not purchasing because the amount of electricity that we agreed to purchase from him is we're using less now because we updated all the school buildings and the town buildings to utilize less electricity. So he has excess electricity that we're not purchasing that he is selling off to other entities. Excess electricity, shut it off at night, let us sleep. Could that have been imposed? Again, these are things that we cannot direct him to do, but you can have that conversation with him. And that, I know that's you- a, That's a wall. That's okay. A, that's a dead end. That's I, Mrs. Wilkie, I know you've reached out to him yesterday. Has he responded as of yet? No. Okay. Give it some time. Reach back out to him. It's only been a day. You, I, I, you just don't get it. That, that's not going to get us anywhere. Okay. You don't acknowledge that. So I believe it will. We're basically thrown under the bus. You're not thrown under the bus. You have a relationship as a neighbor with an entity who has a wind turbine that you can work with to try and mitigate your issues. We don't own the wind turbine. We can't make mitigations of the wind turbine and your issues. You have to work with the person who owns it. it That's not what I pay my 6000 plus in taxes for. Okay. To not have representation, not be protected. I don't feel like we're being respected. Um, I'm trying to be as respectful as possible. I'm sorry if you don't feel that way. Nope, don't feel okay. that way. Mr. Grebe? Tom, <clears throat> Tom Greve, 110 Thayer Drive. Uh, I am not affected by this windmill, um, but you know that I'm here most most meetings. Uh, I've watched all of this transpire. There are a few things that I want to remind the council of. When the contract with Wind Energy was made, there was a guiding principle. It will be no worse than what is there now. We have a man here that did not have flicker, that now has flicker. To me, that means the town can step in. On top of that, many times during the meetings, during the, um, uh, the negotiations, uh, Mr. Brazzini, the lawyer, said that there would be a mitigation plan that was put together that, quote, the town could enforce. That is the way the town can do this. Uh, you can go back to the, uh, the, the videos of that meeting and see this. Um, and I, 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 I'm a little disappointed in the town for not, not being a little bit more proactive in this because you do have some leverage on it. I'm, I understand not everything, but you do have some leverage. You have the contract with wind energy that says no worse than what was there. And we have some things that are worse. And there is supposed to be a mitigation plan. I've never seen it. But that mitigation plan is supposed to be enforceable by the town. Thank you. Um, just like to say, if you could just uh, Mark Wilkie, you, thank you. Uh, 3140. Thank you, Road. Uh, I think it's great the way it's been running the last two weeks. Nice sunny days, no flicker, no noise in the evenings, no noise at night. Um, the Rhode Island guideline for turbines, wind turbines, state the definition of noise is that is considered to the point at which sound becomes bothersome due to the loudness or tone quality. Wikipedia definition, I'm sure you know, noise is found to be um, unpleasant, loud, and disruptive. These impulses are from the blades chopping through the air, not so much from the turbine. 
I urge the council to work towards mitigation with respect to noise, production, operational modification, and curtailment during weather conditions that cause this noise generation. In the letter of intent, they did state that the uh, flicker and structural integrity is enforceable by the town. That's section 11, paragraph 11. Uh, the heading on the paragraph is operation of wind of the new turbine. Uh, January 12, 2016, you were promised, quote, no additional shadow flicker. Also, a taller turbine would be quieter and run more efficiently. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Madam Clerk, we, the letter that we received this evening from uh, Mr. DePasquale, would you please make sure it gets up on the... It won't be till Wednesday. It'll be on the website. Yeah. It'll be on the website on Wednesday because the clerk won't be here in the morning. Um, that has his contact information if you don't already have it. Do we still have cards in the office? No? We're all out of cards? Okay. So the contact information is on there. I, I encourage you all to please reach out to him and make, hold his feet to the fire and make him do what he's promised you to do. Mr. Sousa, you got one more comment? It's, uh, all right. Now you're telling us, so I want to make sure I understand this, to reach out to him. And what if he just says, no, I don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. My so hope is he doesn't do that to you. Okay. And my belief okay. is he won't. Okay. That the, like it, in the uh, when he was presentate doing presentation on this and stuff, he was talking about it wouldn't be no more flicker than what we have. And as you can, what they call people have stated, it has gone further. So he didn't even follow what he said he was going to do, and that's why I can't understand why he's not even here to try to defend himself or at least help these help the people out or reach out to the people that person that you the last meeting that you I gave you the information on uh, Lowell Drive the, the, el the elderly person that has medical issues Mr. Pasquale store hasn't reached out to him and you guys told him make sure you reach out to this gentleman I brought in his address everything and he hasn't reached out to him because I talked to him this morning uh, I mean he was he came back from uh, the hospital and stuff but I talked to him this morning. So, I mean, he's only doing the minimum. What, okay, yeah, oh, yeah, it does make noise. Thank you. That's not going to do it. I can, what they call it, do the same thing. It's just like a, a street out, out there. We'll say it has potholes in it. And you say, well, that street, it's not bad enough yet for uh, us to repair it. Well, people are blowing tires and breaking breaking front ends and stuff but it's it's not that's what this guy's doing to us so that's why we're asking and you guys can just like that gentleman explained to you you guys can enforce because right under your ordinance of noise if you look under the noise ordinance because I already went through it and that's how I had to go to the building inspector because if you look at it, it says go to the building inspector if you have a, a noise problem and then the building inspector says, no, it says it has to be metered by the police. And that's why I had the police come out. But like I told you before, I think that's a waste of the police. I think they have better things to do besides coming out and listening to the noise. And like that policeman said that came out, as soon as he got out of the car and he put it right in his statement, as soon as I got out of the car, I could hear this thing. So how many people have to bring it to your attention that it is? I mean, now... Um, you talked about Mr. Gleason about you guys went out to his where his his uh, place is and you heard the turbine. I'm not saying everybody else. No, here. no, no. But you said you did. Yeah. Okay. How fast was that turning? Because he can slow it down so it doesn't make that much noise. I don't know. Okay. So the, these are things as a salesman can do, just like you uh, you buying a car car. Okay. They can doctor it up and make it look like a cream puff. 
You take it to, after you buy it, you drive it, all of a sudden, bang, this has happened, this has happened to it. But it's just right out of the warranty period, just like your wind turbine. Happened with your wind turbine. The guy went bankrupt. Okay? But something has to be, because this guy is going to just keep continuing what he's doing. And we're going to come keep, keep complaining to him, and nothing's going to get done. Something has to, and you guys, and like I said, underneath the ordinance, if they're just, uh, just look it up, and it says if it's a constant noise, which that is a constant noise. It doesn't stop at night. It doesn't stop. Like I explained to you last time, I get into sleep, and at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, I'm woken up because that thing's making a racket. Nobody wants to hear that racket. I know you wouldn't want me to hear that record in your neighborhood. Your neighbor banging on a uh, set of pans or doing something or decides he's going to cut his lawn at 2 o'clock in the morning. Nobody wants to hear that. And that's all we're trying to tell you. We don't want to hear it. He can slow it down so it doesn't make as much noise. He can stop it right from the flicker. His biggest thing is I need to make the money. I need the town only uses this much electric. I can sell it to, the, to Coventry. And then he had excess, more excess, and he sold to what? The convention center, was it? So he's making hand over fist money on our headache. So he can, because he don't have to turn it. He can, what do they call it? As long as he supplies the town and uh, what do they call it? And, and produces the energy what he predicted he could produce with that wind turbine. He don't have to exceed it. But he wants to exceed it, because I understand he's a businessman. Everybody likes money. I like money. Everybody would, would wear the call. Now, back to his area, and I, I looked at his area, and I saw it. He's got a compound. It's surrounded. It's surrounded. He's, he's back in the, in the, in the what they call it. Am I right? It's a gorgeous place. I, don't get me wrong, it's, but it's like a compound. So how can he even say where people have open where they're not protected by these trees, not protected by this stuff. We have nothing to stop it, to stop the sound. It's high, so the sound travels. Just like anything, you tap something, that sound travels. Now, just because I tapped it here and you heard it here, it ricochets. And it, that's, that's the sound we get. So it bounces off my house, bounces on Chesky's house, bounces on the other guy's house. It just bounces. And like I explained to Mr. Pasquale, about my place, my house is an L. And if you look at the turbine, and he brought, they brought it up on the map, because like I said, I have been, in to been talking with them and stuff, and they want to know what they can do to solve the problem. To solve the problem, just shut it down for these periods of time. It's, it's not rocket scientists, it's not something, what they call, if he's not producing as much electric, hey, you know, I think these people maybe would Say, okay, you know, he had to work he didn't produce enough electric, so he had to spin it a little bit more. But don't spin it to the max so you, are, you can make a, a killing and let everybody suffer. That's what we're doing. We're suffering. And that's why we're coming to you people, to help us out. And this guy, like I said, he's got a nice place. He's got a compound. It's, it's surrounded. He's on the north, north side, so he's not going to get the flicker. He may get the sound, but he's got trees. He's got all kinds of stuff to stop the sound. We have nothing. So. Mr. President, can I just suggest that that's one of the things he talked about was putting up trees for people like yourself that have a problem, and those are one of the items that you should be, be discussing with them. Okay, if you come by my property, <coughs> that's all I can tell you. Uh, I got I have a vitis that I planted and I bought them big. Then now they're, they're thirty, over thirty feet tall. But you can't do nothing with something that's four hundred some feet. Yeah, I mean it's 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 something you can't do nothing. I don't care what he plants, what he does. The only thing I could think of he's, is put a big net around it that can stop the flicker, you know, stay within the net area, but it's going to have to be 400 and some feet. Now, do we want to look at a big net? I mean, it's, there's nothing. But besides, just shut it down. He knows when it flickers. He's told me this. I know when it's going to flicker. I know the time of the year, when it's going to, who's it going to affect, who it's not going to affect. And you know, it's very simple. And like I explained to him also about the street. I said, it's flickering on Sprague Street, 24. I went down 24 last month, and it's flickering on 24. I didn't think it got to 24, because I figured it was in that, in that valley little thing, but it was flickering on 24. Now, that's a safety issue. And the town should be saying, hey, you know something? There's kids walking on Sprague Street. There's kids walking on Education Lane. 
All it would take is somebody to get the flicker or somebody a seizure or something that, that related to that. And they flare off the road or something like that. Just like sun in your eyes where you can't see. That, that, that's a distraction. And his thing is, we're not worried about what's going on. And that's, this is what he told me. We're not worried about what's going on on the street. We just want to know how bad is it affecting your house. It's not only affecting my house. That's what I'm trying to get through to him. It's affecting the whole area. So something has to be done. And I'm hoping the council will at least talk to this guy and say, you know something? We got enough complaints about this thing. What can we do for these people? And have them come back. I'm going to come back to the next meeting, and I think the rest of these people too, just to hear what he thinks he could, might be able to do. He don't have the promises, but tell us something. Don't just tell us, yeah, I'll, you know what they call Like I told you, I called them a year ago. We'll look into it, and we'll get back to you. Have come back to me. So, but this time I can say he's been getting back to me. We've been talking, but nothing's happening. He's just asking questions. Well, what the hell is it? I can do that ask questions and say and do nothing. Something has to be done because it, it's affecting. It's affecting our streets. It's affecting everything. And, it, and if I have to prove, <coughs> prove at the next meeting about this thing, I mean, I did show some, but I, I mean, I got documentation that, that it, it's unbelievable. And I will gladly supply that at the next meeting. But I'll tell you at the next meeting, I'm going to ask for Action 10 News or someone to be here. Because I want this to get out. Because if you, you guys are not willing to do nothing, somebody is going to do something. That's how, they, that's how they took care of the wind turbines. I don't want to be calling my congressmen, my senators and stuff. That's what they did. I'm trying to work it. Because that's how, this is what I do. I do negotiations for the International Association. We do it at the lowest level. You guys are at the lowest level. We don't need to go any further with this. We don't need to put it out there. We don't want people that want to come live in our town saying, whoa, whoa, that's right, that, everybody's complaining about that turbine, that flicker and stuff. That's not an area to live in. We don't want that kind of publicity. We don't want that. We want it to be like everybody thinks. It's nice country setting, quiet neighborhoods, and we don't have big crimes, nothing like that. So let's keep it that way and let you guys do due diligence and at least talk to this guy and get him here and see what he can do. He don't have to promise us. He don't say, yes, I'm going to do that. But let's see what he, he says. But if he says at this meeting, says, you know, I don't have to do that, then, the, then you guys have to step in. Because he has to d mitigate something. In his, what they call it, he said he would. Just like that gentleman said with the, with the what they call it. He stated that. So, so if, he's, if he's stating that to sell you the thing, Make him follow through on it. But he's not following through. So that's what I'm asking. I'm asking the council. And I think probably the rest of the people feel the same way. Let's do something. Let's just not push it underneath the rug. Maybe the, the people will not, not will complain no more. But it's, you know something? It's it, not being pushed under the rug. The council's job at this point in time was to provide a conduit for you to have a relationship yeah. with Mr. DePasquale to help fix your... Most of your issues okay. are similar. Okay. The remedies may be different. You okay. said you've put up, you have 30-foot arborvitae trees now. Yeah. That may work for somebody else where it's not working it, It's for you. possibility, yes. I, I'm not saying that. Mr. DePasquale has to work with you, and his assistant is uh, Hannah. I don't know if she's reached out to anybody. I, I speak to Han Hannah, okay. too. I don't, like I said, I've been in touch with them because I want something done. And, and anybody who... The, the remedy we have right now is to make sure if you're emailing him or if you're calling him, let Mr. Rayner know so we can keep tabs to make sure he is getting in touch with you. The yeah, only getting in touch with us that is and, and working with you. If he's not going to work with us, that's what I'm saying. You guys should be involved in this also. But not just wait to see what Mr. Rayner decides what he's going to say to us. You guys should also be proactive on this. This is our town. This is your town. You guys are our point, point of people we selected to do this, to do the best job you can for us. You can't make everybody happy. Look at the president. He's not, you, can't make, you can't make everybody happy, but you've got to come to a happy medium. And if this guy doesn't go Jeez, happy... I hope you're not comparing us. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> and one, one last thing. Someone asked me, 
know something, you should run for council, and I'll donate money to you to be on the council. Please do. Just a couple of questions. Mr. Vegas. Thank you. Uh, John Vegas, 259 Sprague Street. Just a couple of quick questions. So, Just to clarify, there's been a lot of discussion tonight, and um, I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm clear on this. So <clears throat> does the council believe that they have a clear understanding of the number of complaints and the severity in the opening you had mentioned and mr. de Pesquale mentioned to me and I was really surprised when I came to the meeting last time that the quantity of complaints that were characterized as uh, calls or emails I'm not actually sure how the complaints got to you in my opinion was very small I think it was less than half a dozen and then the number that you've had in this past month I think you said was four, but again, another, in my opinion, low number. Um, the, the number that was reported to us from Mr. DePasquale, which you all see when mm -hmm. this is posted, is four. And this gentleman said he, he was five and hasn't gotten a response. Right. Uh, Mr. Rayner, you've had the same four or five? It's the same four. I've not heard from you, but I've written uh, your information down and I'll forward it uh, to Green Energy first thing in the morning. However, the number being, let's say, small, I think the interest level is quite high. And I think the impact does not reflect the number. I think the people that are here tonight are significantly impacted. And they're, I don't normally participate in town business. And that reflects on my citizenship. Um, and so I am a bit remiss in that regard. This is a significant event for me, so I'm here. Um, <clears throat> you have uh, suggested that we contact green energy ourselves. Um, I think that shows a certain interest level of the town's desire to represent the citizens in the interests of those citizens, in the interests of the town Right? There's a significant number of people in the town that are not affected by the windmill. And there's a significant number of people in the town that are really pleased by the windmill. I think Portsmouth is better off for having a windmill. We, it, when, in comparing ourselves to other towns, it's a thing that says we're different. It's an, I, I consider it as a bonus. Um, but I don't feel like the town is being responsible in its obligation to be responsible with its implementation. And mitigation, I think, being left to the developer allows a lot of opportunity for uh, for, for, for just ignoring the problem. And I feel that if the developer ig ignores the impact or the, um, the obligation like the council, I believe, is doing, in my opinion, um, there is going to be no remedy. I'm going to give it a, a shot, and I will let Mr. Rainer know about all my opportunities and any benefit that you will hear um, my opinion on that. Um, the next thing is, is uh, when I spoke with Mr. DePesquale, he had mentioned different things. He had mentioned Arbovides. <clears throat> He also mentioned that those costs that he spends get added to the note. Are you aware of that? No. Is anyone on the council aware of how these costs are paid for? Because I believe they are paid for by being added to the note. No, they don't get added to the note. It extends the amount of time. Uh, where he realizes his payback. Those are internal calculations on his part. There is no increase in the note. Okay, I, I apologize. So it, it, it's a cost that the town is taking on. There is no cost to the town. We have a 20-year contract at 15.5 cents per kilowatt hour. That's it. Okay. He's in an investment, he's calculated an internal rate of return on this investment. It takes longer for him to make money if he has to put up our providers for you. If I can just recharacterize that, it sounds like you're saying that he's paying for it. Would that be a fair estimation? 
He pays for it in the sense that it takes him longer to make the amount of money that uh, he had programmed uh, when he got the bank loan. So the town doesn't pay more per kilowatt hour or longer? No. Like, like what you were just saying? So a 20 year contract at 15.5 okay. cents. I, I appreciate that clarification because I, he offered lots of mitigation, I must say. And I wasn't pleased with his freeness of offering that type of mitigation. I felt like he was bribing me. Now granted, they were very reasonable things, but I was not expecting that. I was expecting the windmill to be shut off. I was not expecting to say, I'll put these things up for you, I'll do this for you, I'll do that for you. Um, I, I was not comfortable with that. I felt like I was being bribed. Now that sounds like what the council expects me to receive as mitigation. I just wanna be clear, that's what I've been offered and I'm not sure that I'm going to get the same type of offer that my neighbor might get. And I don't feel that is a responsible way to deal with this. Uh, just one more note here. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed that the council's not interested in continuing this further. Now, granted, I haven't been at meetings where there's been hot button issues, so maybe this, maybe there's been many, many more hot button issues, but. I would think that there's enough people here tonight. You guys are very busy, you have lots to go on. So you, if you decide not to continue it, I, I respect that because you have things you need to work on. But to me, it seems like, I'll say there's a, a, a dozen people here tonight that are affected by the windmill that would like to talk about it again next week and have Mr. D. Pesquale come down here and hear it. That to me, I may be wrong. You know, you guys are busy. I may be wrong, but that sounds like he should be coming back and it should be on the agenda. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jack Flynn, 20 Lowell Drive. Uh, I'm going to be brief. Uh, the picture I took this afternoon before I got here. How can you block that off with trees? It's already, 30, it's already three quarters of the way in the air. It does, it, that, that noise is directly right to all of us on Lowell Drive. And like I said before, for something's got to be done. All right. I thought I'd just show you this picture. Thank you. Probably seen it a thousand times. Okay. Thank you. For Thank you. Okay. Mr. Will? Yes, Mr. Mark Will P. 3140 East Main Road. Um, the area where I live, John, that just spoke, and the gentleman from 59 Sprague Street, the elevation difference from where we live to the base of the tower is 80 feet. So you add that onto the 414 feet. We're at 494 feet. I don't think there are any trees that uh, you can buy to uh, help us with, the, with those situations. Um, with respect to the sound, um, the sound mitigation that is to be borne by the operator of the windmill as stated in the agreement. So it just needs to be um, forwarded to Mr. Pasquale. D. Pasquale. D. Pasquale. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Susan? Yep. One quick one. Do you have to move on to other business tonight? Okay. And get um, everybody home safely. Hopefully. When I brought up to Mr. Pasquale, when I brought up about him being sued for the 150. 160. He said uh, they were not sued, which I know they were sued because I have the documentation. But that's not what they call it. But he did say we give them a stipend of $150 a month. How come he's not offering it to us? If we're complaining, why isn't the town saying, you know something, you did this for North Kingstown, why didn't you do it for these guys? You knew it was, it was a problem in North Kingstown because they were sued. They were sued why they were negotiating. And I can prove that to you. I have the dates. And if you counts would like to sit down, or would you like me to bring it up here and put it as a slideshow for you? I can prove that he was. And he did not tell you guys that. Because he's a salesman. And I don't blame him. He doesn't want to, but to tell you anything bad about his winter. He wants to tell you all the good stuff. And just like I, ex I said, you can slow it down. Make it nice and quiet. Come over. Come listen to it. So, I mean, it's a, it's a sales, sales, sales pitch, but 
We're not, he's not even saying, okay, you know something, I did this for North Kingstown, would you guys accept something like this or something? He's not. He's not offering us nothing. Nothing? What do they call it? I mean, he hasn't even offered to plant trees in my yard or anything like that. And like I said, I have talked to him quite a few times. All they want to know, how is it flicker? How does it bother your house? That's it. He's just... It, so it, that's in, why... It, in fairness, it's only yeah. been 30 days yeah. that we've yeah. had this stretch. So... Yeah. But that's why, Mr. That's why he he should be here. He should, if if I had, I know if I had the company, and I want, I would be defending my company. Yes, or you know something, I will do something, or I know I can't do nothing because I have to produce this much energy. If I go over there, some, it's something. There has to, he has to do something, not just okay, because I could talk to a talk show host and do the same thing. They can listen to my stories, and that's it. So, I think I think the council should, and and if, like I said, have them come to the next meeting. Tell them you you need to you need to address these people because they, this is where the people can gather. And I would even even put it in the in the Portsmouth Times saying, if you have a problem or something, if you have is, issue something with the wind turbine, please come to this meeting. This will be your chance. We are not, This will be your only no, one chance. And, and let's see what happens. Because I know there's more people. I mean, I can't get all the flyers out. I'm the one who's passing out all these flyers, and these people are probably saying who the heck they would, they would get to their house, and it's stuck in their little door and stuff, to let them know to come here. But you know something? It's starting to cost me a lot of money to print these flyers, and, and I go, going to go around and what they call Because I want people that it is affected by this. I don't, you know? Um, I want to know what your obligation is to the citizens of this town. What are you going to do about it? What is the town's obligation to we, the people? Because I have had it. You see this TV? That's the wind turbine in my face, day in and day out, and I'm done with it. I want to know what this town intends to do for me. A citizen, I pay my taxes. You have an obligation to me. What are you going to do? We've provided. No, that okay. you have not provided. Okay. When the small turbine went up, the town didn't, we didn't want it in our neighborhood, but it got put in our neighborhood anyway. I wrote to Driscoll when he was the administrator. I have an email I sent telling about the noise it was making, the smell it was making. I still have the email and it was disregarded. And when I called up Driscoll, it was disregarded. And then another t bunch of people came and told you that they didn't want the wind turbine when the smaller one broke. We informed the town. The people got together and told you, we don't want the wind turbine in our backyard. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing as long as it's not in your backyard. It's in my backyard. I see it day in and day out. I go outside, I hear the noise day in and day out. I can't sit on my patio without hearing that noise. I hear the crickets. You know something? I do hear the crickets. I go in my house, I shut the door, and I can't hear the crickets no more. But I hear that wind turbine. I hear it day in and day out. And when we have to medicate ourselves to sleep at night, there's an injustice. And you are our justice, and you should lay down the law to them, to Mr. Pasquale. You allowed it in ours just like that toxic dump you allowed in Island Park. Enough is enough. I've fed up with it. If we have to seek legal advice, the town will also take part of that too. Because who did the due diligence here? Were you on the board? Were you? Were you? I'm pointing fingers. I want to know. This is in my backyard. You have an obligation to me first, not to Mr. Pasquale, and not to your dollar a year rent that he pays you. Because you know something? 25 years, I may only have 25 years left to walk on this earth. I live in Portland. I was there before the wind turbine. My kids went to this school. I was raised in this town. Was Mr. Pasquale? No. I went through the school system here in this town. Was he? No. What obligation do you have for me, to me? I want to know. What are you going to do about it? The same thing I've stated four times tonight. Insignificant. I understood. Insuffice. Don't like it. It's not good enough. You need to take more action. So your 
Your request would be that I'm we just take it better. down. I'm better. Take it down. Put it down in the dog park. You got 20 acres over there down, down the dog park. I remember when you first had the discussion with the wind turbine. Matter of fact, I think it was in this room before you guys set up council here. Me and my sister both came and they decided, oh, where would a good place to be? Where would be a good place to put up a wind turbine? We said, the over in Melville, where the tank farm is. That would be a better place for it. Nobody's around there. There's no residential neighborhood over there. I mean, you got some military housing. Those people come and go. What are they going to say? Why didn't you put it over there? I remember the meeting in here. I go way back in this town, too. Understood. Understood. No. But I want to know what you're going to do for us. How are you going to support us? How are you going to stand behind us? We provided you with a no, platform to speak. No, that's not good okay, enough. Okay, so well that's, that's, that's all, all I'm going to tell you at that's this point in time. Have. Who did their due diligence on this? Did anybody forsake? Do you know that he was ha had a lawsuit going on already when he was hired? Did anyone? Did anyone? You failed us. You failed all of us. And we have to live. We're going to grow in numbers. You failed. Thank you. Do your due diligence to this town. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Again, all I can request is that you reach out to Mr. DePasqual and talk with him in order to move on and mitigate your issues at this point in time. Ms. Pedro, last comment. If we are the conduit, as you say, Mr. President, um, is there any way that we can bring the two parties together? Offer, we, offer we can We can space. offer up this space anytime that they'd like. It wouldn't be at a regular council meeting if they wanted to come here and sit at a table, that's up to Mr. Uh, De Pasquale to come here and do that. But absolutely, we can offer up a space to have a, a group meeting. Um, as someone suggested, um, you know, a time and a place well, we can ask for everyone to meet. Sure. Mr. Rayner, can because you ask uh, Mr. De Pasquale if he'd be willing to come sit down in a group Certainly. rather than doing it individually? Yes. Okay. We, we, do, uh, we do all these people. And, and I've got to say, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm so sorry I voted for this. I really am. You can even meet at my deck on 36th level driver. You can see the flicker in and the noise. And we can enjoy our backyard. You can have a meeting there if you like. Mr. Sousa, I know you said you don't want to really want to be the point person, but at this point you are the point person. Would you like Mr. Rayner to reach out to you, to you if... Um, uh, anybody that would like my number or you want to give me your number? I or... Gladly work with you if any of your information you have, please send it. I did try to do it, but I couldn't get the website that you guys could put your flicker and stuff so I could have it. But somebody hacked into it and... Yes, it all up. So I redid it again and tried again, but somebody, and I had to leave it open so people could. And when you do something like that, it's, it's open to everyone. Mr. Rayner's email address is published on the website. It's very simple, rrayner at portsmouthri.com. If you would like to be informed, if there's a group meeting set up, he will set up, you can set up a group email and blast it out to everybody. It's probably the easiest way for everybody to get a hold of. Okay. Thank you for su suggesting that. Um, now, can we use this place on a, on a Saturday or something Absolutely. like that? Because I think that's probably best because I know a lot of people that wanted to be here were third shift. Like, I, I work shift myself, and I know other people too and stuff. But So, I mean, a Saturday or, or a su Sunday's really, because that's church. I, but Saturday, if, if if Saturday is the best day that the, that all of you can get together with Mr. Deepas, well, we'll absolutely open up the doors. Now, can the council members be here? It wouldn't be official council meeting; would be able to take well, action. I'm not asking for. It. I just would like you guys to hear what he says to us, 
so you guys can see so that if he's if he's got it what they call it or if he's just whitewashing us I mean that everybody don't have to show from the council but I'd like, like to see some of the council people here okay. to okay. uh just to and what? also if we could have a police officer because just in case it gets out of hand I mean I mean people <laughs> I, I would hope not. I, yeah. I, I would hope. I, we I all hopefully have that doesn't happen. But you know, some respectful stuff conversations. Yeah. Yes. Respectful conversations. Yeah. But I've been at many of them where uh, they get out of hand. We we have to escort the person out. But hope not. But thank <laughs> thank you, Mr. Susan. We we will well, we will reach out to Mr. DePasquale, uh, if not tonight, tomorrow or okay. Wednesday, depending. He stuff. can reach out to me. And we can set up a day, and like I said, I'll get it out. And like I said, I would like to put it in the paper. I don't know how to, if Scott kind of Times would even do something like that, because it needs to go further, further. So, besides just me handing out flies, you can ask Mr. McGaw. Thank you all for coming out tonight. I hope you uh, all get home safely and survive the. Uh, whatever feet of snow we're going to get tonight. Uh, old business number two has been removed at the request of Mr. Humphreys. Uh, I'm going to bring that back on a later date. Uh, discussion and action. Uh, item number three is request to release the impact fees for school safety budget. Mr. Rayner, you're going to check and make sure how we could do this legally if we had to do anything in terms of the state and how we address our budget issues. Can you let us know what you came up with? Or? Uh, correct, Mr. President. I've talked to the Auditor General. I've also talked to uh, the Department of Revenue and RIDE. Uh, there is no requirement to amend the budget at the state level. Uh, and the reason why is these funds are not commingled uh, with the general fund. Uh, impact fees are fees collected uh, through the uh, Building Inspection Office. Um, they are maintained in a separate uh, restricted account, uh, not even in the same bank as uh, town funds. Uh, the funds are tracked uh, via database, and as you're aware, uh, if the funds are not used uh, within eight years, uh, they have to be returned to the developer. So there is no requirement to file an amended budget. However, what I have asked uh, the finance department to do is uh, start preparing a report uh, that provides the council an accounting of the funds that are currently in that account uh, and then memorializes the spending as authorized uh, by the town council against that uh, restricted fund. So the short answer is we don't have to file an amended budget uh, because no. it's not general fund money. Uh, however, I, I have asked finance to uh, begin uh, reporting on this fund to the council. Motion to release the um, impact funds for school safety capital budget. Is there a second for discussion? Second for discussion. I'm just going to let Mr. Kesson catch up a little bit because I, we started so, a little uh, bit quick, but he can get back in. Somebody forgot me. Uh, Mr. President, sorry. just a point of order. Uh, you've already yeah. uh, approved. Oh, that's right. Uh, I'm sorry. I withdraw budgets. the motion. So the tank farm no. came he, off? He came off, yeah. He Off the agenda? Mr. Uh, Humphreys asked to pull that. Thank you. So we actually just we're discussing releasing it. Well, not releasing, but how to account for and what the state has said we need to do with the impact fees. Okay. And then a budget. There's no backup for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Rain, I'm going to ask you just to roll I'll, through it real I'll quick. Go again. I'm sorry. Uh, I've talked to the the auditor general. I've also talked to uh, the deputy at the uh, Department of Revenue. Uh, the school department has reached out to ride. Uh, there is no requirement at the state level to file an amended budget. Uh, these are funds that are not commingled with the general fund. As a matter of fact, they are tracked and kept uh, in a restricted account at, at a separate bank from town funds. Uh, if they are not used within eight years, they have to be returned to the developer. Uh, these funds are tracked in an extensive database maintained by the building inspection office. Uh, however, what I have asked finance department to do is uh, prepare and then submit to you as required uh, an accounting, a, a report that delineates the accounting of the funds in the account and then memorializes the spending that you have authorized against uh, the impact fees. So as money is spent that you've authorized, the, 
the report would be updated and submitted to the council for your tracking purposes. On a separate report, right? Correct. It seems okay. Um, but somebody's going to spend more money than we got, and you're going to. This is going to be. Yeah, I think like it, off it the, would be off the books for one year. To do that only because uh, the way that, the way the fund works. I mean, first off, they, they didn't ask for. Uh, right now, there's over four hundred thousand dollars in the account. They've asked for two hundred twenty-five. Um, when they uh, invoices are submitted to the town, uh, and they're only uh, honored if the council is authorized. I mean, we haven't used these funds very much since I've been here. Um, this is the first time, I think. Uh, there was one time last year. Um, I think it's just a good idea to make sure that you're aware, <laughs> certainly make me aware, uh, of what's going on with the funds uh, on a regular basis. Uh, but they do not at any time ever get commingled with uh, the general fund. And the school department can't just use them. They have to come to the council. The school department has to go to the council. They're only authorized That's to use 225. Only the school, <coughs> in accordance with our ordinance, only the school council, or only the school department can utilize those funds, but only if you, as the town council, authorizes uh, the spending of those funds. So as long as the, we're not, we're not, we're not going to be held accountable on, uh, the, on, the, on the spending? The, the accounting, uh, really is uh, the state law that tells it, that requires us to return the funds if they're not obligated within a certain amount of time. And that, that is tracked very rigorously. But the, the money spent will be accounted by the school department in. Correct. And, our, that, and that's what I want to reflect on this report to the council now. Absolutely. Is, uh, is that your question on that one? Okay. Yep. So anybody, any other questions? Old business number four, discussion, investigation conducted to inquire into the circumstances surrounding the FY1213 fund deficit balance, which was at $916,567, roughly. Somewhere in that vicinity. Yeah. Correct, Mr. President. I'm, I'm going to come to the podium for this. Sure. Mr. President, may I have a minute? Mr. Kess. Thank you very much. I've, Good. I've, I've taken every... A uh, document that Mr. Rayner has given us, and I've condensed, I don't know, it's got to be like 150 pages. I've got it down to one spreadsheet, if you'd like yeah. to look at it. Um, Even with a magnifying glass, I can't read well, it. You don't have to read it, because I keep things pretty simple. I am. And what I, when I went through Mr. Rayner's document, I looked at the very first page, and he's got reference doc documents. He's got uh, enclosures. And he stops at 37A. The problem with this whole thing, and I don't think we've had enough time to, to uh, deal with this, when you finally get to his conclusions, starting even with one, there's documents 39 and 41 that were not part of the package that was handed out. I would like to make a motion to table this for two weeks, actually four weeks probably, because next week I was going to bring back my um, questions on the budget. It all ties into this or the questions on the audit. Because we, we get all the way out to like 40, 46. I need your help reading this. <laughs> yes, 40, 46. 46 documents. There's seven documents. I can't tell if there's one page or 10. See this? It's yeah. easy. Green is the ones we have. Red is the ones we don't have. Um, there's 10 documents, seven documents that are missing. And I can't tell if, in fact, um, He's used, Mr. Mr. Rayner has used them in his conclusions. They're highlighted in, in hot pink. Your conclusion, um, uh, Mr. If if I can, let's Mr. let's Kessler. yeah, let's let's do a little bit of the, the presentation first. The way the the way an investigation is conducted, you gather the evidence. The evidence is based on your references, and uh, they're referred to as enclosures. Every finding of fact which is the second. There's a preliminary statement which gives me the authorization, i.e. the motion passed by you to conduct this investigation. I understand that. The findings of fact, every finding of fact has to be backed up by documentation. The documentation are the enclosures. 
the conclusions that you're reading, those conclusions are not enclosures. Those conclusions are based on the findings of fact. So there are 46 findings of fact. That's why you'll see numbers going into the, uh, into the 40s. Every enclosure is accounted for, uh, and of course they are available. This is a 190-page document. This is two months' worth of work, uh, and it is uh, entirely available at the town clerk's office. The meat of it, obviously, all the finding and facts are documented in the uh, full report, but the report itself is seven pages long. Proceed with your presentation for now, Mr. Anderson. Mr. President, we've only had since Thursday at the close of business to review a hundred and how many pages? 190? It's approximately 190 uh, pages. It's bigger, than the, it's bigger than the audit. Okay. But the second thing I'd like to say is even in the finding of fact in the documents used, enclosure 11A is an email string that got truncated because I started looking at all the finding of fact. So I started reading those documents. I couldn't get through them, so I started going through the documents that generated the conclusion. Okay. to try to get ready for this meeting, Mr. Let, President. Let, let me stop you for a second. Tonight is a discussion. There's no action to be taken. If at the end of Mr. Rayner's presentation and your subsequent review of everything that you have, and if you're missing something, it could have gotten lost through email because there was a lot of emails. I didn't um, get any emails. No, you got all paper. I didn't get any emails. If after you have some that time to chew good. on it and review it, if you have further questions, we can put it back on. But Mr. Rayner has uh, again produced Mr. a report that he's going to discuss this evening. If at the end of his discussion and your review, you don't agree with the conclusions of what happened with this warrant, then we can bring it back. But I don't think that we sit here and say, you know, Mr. Rayner, you know. We've had a year since I brought this up last mm -hmm. February. And it's taken two months to review it. And try and dig through all the paper. And we only get happened. and we only get from Thursday, from Thursday night at five o'clock when I went to the police station, till Monday. Again, if after the end of his presentation, and your subsequent follow-up, you find that there's something that's different, you can bring it back. There is no action this evening. It's a discussion and a review of what he has found. So I don't know why we need to shoot it in the foot now. Let's let, let Mr. Rayner give his presentation and see if you agree with it or not. And if you want to bring it back in two weeks or a month, go ahead. I just think it's premature. Okay. I, I mean, when we made the motion and I noticed there were minutes quoted from my, myself um, as, as findings of fact um, about a slush fund, and that's a nautical term from square riggers. It was a, uh, it was boiling down of, uh, of, of pigs and, and fat, and that's what they used to, uh, to use on a mast, um, and a cook was always allowed to do that because it gave extra money for for uh, uh, for the crew. I just think that when you look at all of this information, this should have been reported as we re as because I went and looked at what you said. I thought we were only looking for a spreadsheet that saw in 2012 we authorized a million dollars worth of of uh, road funds. We bonded 500 of it. That got spent. We didn't, because of the audit and the findings in the audit, because I got that far through, that in 2014, we found out we didn't have um, a full-time finance department, it sounds like, in, in that we didn't close the books down at the end of 2014. 2014. Point of order, Mr. President. Mr. There, there's a Mr. storm President. coming, it's and uh, it's Mr. quarter President. to nine. I think that Mr. Rayner is should be allowed to give his presentation. And uh, I'm, 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 I'm having asking. a discussion. I'm no, having. I, I have to ask. Mr. Roberts, please. I hope again. Right. I was hoping to see that we we determinated 2000, and because this is Mr. Rayner's report, I've gotten this far through it. We got to 2014. We didn't close down the, the town books correctly. There was $500 in the, in the um, general fund that didn't get moved into the paving fund. 
I get all of that. I was hoping for something very simple, and and I don't know what we have. Un unfortunately, and I, unfortunately, I'm I'm not comfortable going through this uh, without knowing it. Understood. Unfortunately, through the process, and if we allow Mr. Rayner to make his presentation, maybe it will become more clear to you. It this, is it, it's this wasn't, clear. It, this wasn't as easy as just. Oh, here it is. We'll fix it. There was a lot of moving parts that apparently happened in the previous administration that caused us to be where we we're at. Mr. Rayner, if you want to start your presentation, please, and we'll uh, go from there. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, yeah, it, obviously, this uh, the nine hundred sixteen thousand uh, dollars that was referred to. Uh, of course, that was brought up uh, last year. My tasking then was to come to you this year after the audit and present to you a recommendation to uh, liquidate that uh, deficit and that warrant. Uh, next slide, please. This year, uh, the audit was presented on January 22nd. Uh, it was, uh, there was a motion to receive and place it on file. There was also a motion for an analysis of the 2012-13 warrants fund, and there was quite a bit of discussion about that because there was an apparent growth in that fund. Uh, you passed that uh, motion, and I'll present to you tonight uh, my uh, investigation. Next slide, please. Uh, as I've just stated, uh, the process uh, followed the investigation method. I collected information. Uh, I determined findings of fact. Uh, based on that information, based on those findings of fact, I came to conclusions, and then I uh, will present to you my recommendations. Next slide, please. First off, just to, dis uh, just to define to people, what are we talking about? Uh, what is a warrants fund? Uh, quite simply, in our case, it refers to the issuance of debt uh, to finance capital improvement projects. And historically, Portsmouth has used the term warrants uh, to, note, to denote school capital improvement bonds. Um, next slide, please. On January 30th of 2013, the town council authorized borrowing for various capital projects. Uh, depicted on the slide is what that bond ordinance authorized. It authorized up to $2.4 million uh, for five particular projects. Fire code upgrades to Melville and Hathaway, uh, fire uh, correction school repairs uh, to school buildings, uh, road, seat, uh, road resurfacing, and then uh, some repairs to town buildings and a DPW truck. Uh, those figures uh, add up to uh, the anticipated uh, amount of that bond. Next slide, please. On that same evening, the town council passed two resolutions associated with that ordinance. That's uh, not the same evening. Uh, you got two I'm sorry, I meant it, it, well, it was the same evening. And it, it, it's a typo. Yeah, I'll make sure that gets repaired. So that's January 30th. That's supposed to be 13 right there? Yes, it was the same night. And could I also get a copy of this um, PowerPoint presentation, we, please? May I ask a question? Why are we seeing a different presentation than was put in our package? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Why didn't we get this? This is a PowerPoint. It's reviewing all the information you have in front of you. pages that are in your report. It, why don't we Boy, this wait would have been a, okay. This would have been a lot easier. Okay. It's a presentation. That's what he's here to do. Okay. Let's sit and watch the presentation. Well, if you have usually, further information. We usually get a Understood. copy of the PowerPoint. Okay. Mr. Rainer, continue, please. That same evening, there were two resolutions passed in relation in, uh, relative to that uh, ordinance. There was a resolution to memorialize uh, the $1.85 million for school building improvements, which included $750,000 for Hathaway. So if you go to the previous slide, that amount equals those top three bubbles uh, to the uh, uh, all the school money. So the fire code upgrades to Melville, school building repairs, and the fire school uh, uh, fire uh, upgrades to Hathaway. And then there was a resolution <coughs> uh, to uh, issue uh, bonds uh, to um, refinance existing bonds so that we could take advantage, so the town could take advantage of lower interest rates. Next slide, please. Okay, the full 1.85 million was not borrowed for school building improvements. Uh, the reason was the schools, uh, the reason for that were the, uh, 
the school ended up using fund surplus to pay for the Hathaway fire code upgrades uh, because the town waited too long to borrow the money. There was a window in which the town had to borrow the money after receiving state approval and they failed to do so. That meant that the town would have lost all housing aid on that project, so the school agreed to use their surplus to ensure the town got the housing aid. Next slide, please. So therefore, uh, the money borrowed for the school uh, capital improvement projects was a Ryback loan of $1.1 million. And that was going to be for school building upgrades uh, and repairs and the fire code upgrades at Melville School. Next slide, please. So there were three significant borrowing events in 2013. $812,000 bond for town <coughs> capital improvement projects, $1.1 million Ryback loan for school capital improvement projects, and $927,000 uh, in re refunding bonds. Next slide, please. So the uh, fiscal year 12-13 uh, warrants fund was established uh, in the general ledger, and it was established with a fund code of 689, uh, of 98, 689, uh, 6100. <clears throat> Next slide, please. And when you look at the budget by line item for that year, you can see uh, that they had started applying some of the uh, charges to that warrant. And you'll see uh, next to the 779 that there was no money, there was no money put towards it. So the parentheses around the number indicates a negative number. So already that fund was in deficit. Next slide, please. So why was it in deficit? The problem is that the Ryback loan was applied to town, the town capital project fund and not uh, the Fund 98 12, fiscal year 12-13 warrant fund. So you see up there on the slide, the money was applied to the town capital projects, not the school capital project fund. Next slide, please. So of course that would beg the question, uh, you know, who was responsible, why did they do this, and what was the effect? I, I can only determine uh, with any level of certainty what the effect was on the town. Next step, next slide. So from the inception of that, uh, that warrants fund up and through 2016, school capital improvement project charges against that warrant uh, result, resulted in a total of $916,214.54. So there were charges in fiscal year 12, 13, 14, 15, and no charges to that warrant in 16. Next slide, please. So my conclusions. The charges against that warrant fund were the appropriate charges. That is what that warrant fund was established for. The fund is in deficit because the proceeds of that Ryback loan were misapplied to the town capital projects fund. Next slide, please. As Mr. Kesson uh, referenced to earlier, there was a concern when the motion for the investigation was passed that uh, there was perhaps a slush fund. Um, one might argue that money was improperly borrowed from the 1213 warrants fund to increase either the town capital funds uh, uh, line or uh, the fund balance in fiscal year 2013. Or a simple clerical error. It could very well have been a simple clerical error, but one that probably should have been caught uh, years before now. Next slide, please. So when the audit was presented this year, uh, there is an apparent growth in the, the warrant fund. It went from $916,215 uh, and there was $232,000 and change added to it, uh, which made it grow to, appear to grow to $1.14 million. Next slide, please. That $232,000 uh, represents school CIP expenditures that were authorized in fiscal year 2016 and 17. And all of those charges uh, listed there 
in the general ledger are school CIP expenditures. Next slide, please. Those CIP expenditures were assigned a fund code of 98. Same fund code that was assigned to the 1213 Warrants Fund. But this is fund code 98 series 700. Next slide, please. So the key here is that the account key is a two-digit field. The 1213 Warrants Fund is assigned an accounting key 98, series 689, the fiscal year 1617 school CIP expenditures were assigned an accounting key 98, series 700. The deputy finance director applied the expenditures to that accounting key because we've already assigned all the two digit numbers up through and including 99. No new charges were made to the original warrant, account key number 98, 689. So therefore the balance in that warrant fund is still uh, appropriately 916 to 1454. There's been no growth since fiscal year 2015. Next slide, please. So what is the status of the Town Capital Projects Fund? We'll go back to the beat to the same year, 1213. Next slide, please. In that year, the town initiated a road improvement program. The road improvement program, as uh, envisioned, would start out in fiscal year 1213 with a million dollars. Five hundred thousand dollars of it would be the bond coming out of that eight hundred and twelve thousand dollar issue. Five hundred thousand dollars would be cash. Every year thereafter there would be a million dollars applied to the roads until the road conditions warranted a reduction in that amount. Next slide please. As you can see in the audit report from 2013 the $812,000 bond for the town CIPs, which includes that $500,000 that was supposed to be used for that first year of the road program, was transferred into the town's capital fund account. Next slide, please. The cash wasn't. Next slide, yes. But the $500,000 was not. Next slide, please. The $500,000 was not transferred into the account to make up for that million dollars in the first year of the road program until a year later. Next slide, please. But in that, yes, sir. Was that a clerical error again? I can only go by the audit reports. I've there come were a to lot the same problems. conclusion you have. But right. if we continue to have errors that aren't checked, then I'm worried about moving forward. And that's why I was worried about the, the warrant, what we found in the audit this year. That's all my phase of yeah, it. Keep going I, with your presentation. I, and I agree. And I think that the point I'm trying to make is that there were no errors. There is an explanation for the, the apparent growth in the warrant 12-13 uh, fund. From this year, this is the key year, uh, fiscal year 13-14. From 15 on, all the charges were appropriate, and the money was applied as it was uh, approved and budgeted by the council. So this is the year, after months of work, that I've had to fixate on. So the $500,000 from the first year in cash was not applied until fiscal year 13-14, but it should have been applied to the in 12-13 to make, to make it a full million dollars for the roads. So in the same year that they finally applied the cash to the road program, that year was supposed to be the first year of the million dollars in cash for the road program. And what I've seen here is this is, this is the budget that was approved, contribution to the road improvement plan, $1 million. So it was budgeted, the town set a levy, taxes were, were, were uh, garnered, and you had enough theoretically for the million dollar road program. Next slide, please. But the million dollars was never transferred from the million dollar, from the, from the general fund to the capital fund. So in the audit report uh, for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2014, you see a deficit in the town capital fund of $978,633. That's even with 
the Rybeck money that was put into that account. So that account, you see a transfer in of $1.1 million, but you don't see the transfer in of the million dollars cash for the road program. So what does this mean? Next slide. That means that as charges are being made against the warrant fund, the appropriate charges, they're being charged against a fund that had no cash applied to it. So the deficit is growing. So you have a warrant fund with $916,214.54 deficit that has been there since 2015, and you've got, in the 15 audit, a deficit in the town capital projects fund of $978,633. Because the million wasn't transferred. Because the million wasn't transferred. So you have two funds with deficits in them. So my conclusion, there is a deficit of at least almost a million dollars residing in the town capital fund and has been residing there since fiscal year 2013-14. It's difficult to see because since then we have issued other bonds that have gone into the town capital fund, but that money just when, when it's bonded and it's, and it's deposited, that money isn't always obligated. For instance, we put the police station bond money in there, it's gonna take us two, three years to spend it. So it looks like your capital fund is flush. And in fact, it's a million short. Correct. So the Ryback loan, so the second conclu conclusion <clears throat> is that the Ryback loan proceeds were inappropriately applied to the town capital fund. So that leads to the next question. Next slide, please. <coughs> Where are the funds? Yeah, right. So are we down three or two? Two. So the Ryback funds that were owed the school department, we spent on the town side. Correct. But we never gave them their 1.1 million. Correct. So I can get, can I get a, can I get I was wrong back? <laughs> can I get one of those back? I see your point. <laughs> um, so where, where, Where's the money that you had budgeted for the roads in 13, 14? There's a million dollars that should have been put into the capital fund. Next slide, please. This is from that 13, 14 audit. That 13, 14 audit um, illustrated to you at the end of the year that the fund balance grew by $755,000. Next slide, please. What happens when, at the end of the year, when we have a surplus? It gets swept into the, fund, the fund balance. balance. <coughs> so that's $755,329 that should have been part of the million dollars that went into the road improvement program that year is sitting in the fund is balance. Sitting in the fund balance. Next slide, please. So my conclusion, money budgeted for the town capital improvement plan was not transferred in and is residing in the fund balance. However, that was 700, a little over $700,000. It's not the million. It's not the million. If the capital fund had, if the capital funds budgeted had been transferred as budgeted, a deficit would have appeared in the general fund in fiscal year 13-14. Next slide. So what happened? Next slide. While the audit is going on, the town earned a AAA bond rating. That AAA bond rating was based on what at the time was felt to be strong management, uh, financial policies, uh, the ability to maintain balanced accounts, all while increasing the fund balance. Next slide. Yet, while you got the AAA bond rating and you increase the fund balance, the audit is chugging on and then the audit report comes out and there are findings of material weaknesses in the town's ability uh, to uh, manage its finances. Next slide, please. Mr. Kessler. Thank you. Yes, sir. That is not a complete report which shown, right? What, no, what that's that an excerpt from the report. I'm taking this from the 
the letter that was issued to the council with that audit. Correct. And that, <coughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, that audit showed that there was a deficiency on the school side that we didn't meet the requirements of the federal grant. And on the town side, all these delayed clearing up of the accounts, which was not virtually nothing other than we had a we had lack of clerks that that went through it. Well, and I'm not, let's, let's, it's let's not a name. That. It's a finance director. It's somebody. No, I understand. But if you look at the that same report, this is from the auditor's letter. Right. There were thirty eight million dollars in significant adjustments on the town side. Right, because the total budget never got moved over. The thirty-three million, right from the get-go, didn't get. And moved. you'll see, yes, exactly. There were bonds that, that were not recorded in the town ledger. There was lack of timely reconciliations. Cut-off procedures were not performed. Adjustments were not recorded uh, until after the fiscal year had been done, uh, which all resulted in a thirty-eight million dollars, thirty-eight million dollars in significant adjustments. So what I'm trying to say here is that there were significant problems in the finance department while this is going on, while management is under the, is operating with the understanding that there, is, there are strong financial policies in place, that we are balancing our budget, and that we are increasing our fund balance. We, we couldn't have been increasing our fund balance if we had a $33 million transfer that didn't happen. But you did. The fiscal year 13-14 audit shows that there was over seven hundred thousand dollars transferred to the fund balance but that was because of the the school didn't get their money in the right account the 1.1 million we owed the schools should have never went into the town budget correct that's correct but that's a clerical error and that's and, a clerical and that, error that's never been fixed that money is it's those numbers are still sitting in our fund balance because the numbers, the 1.1, was applied to the town capital account, not the school capital account. So that results in a deficit in, it's, it all ends up being part of the school, or the town budget. So when that happened, the 900 and some odd $16,000 shows up as a deficit in the warrant. The only way to zero out that warrant is to take it out of the fund is to balance. take it either out of the fund balance or, or it, so. take it out of the town capital fund, which is where it was put. And then you're going to see this. Why did I have to go through all this? One, to answer your question. But two, the council needs to know that when we pay for that police station, this deficit from 1314 is going to resurface. Only, only because we had $1.1 million that was owed to school put into the town account. But we were, yes. But we did not transfer the million dollars. So, so we sat here through the 12 audit, or the, the 17 audit, and we had somebody who stood up in front of us and said, through the, through, and I'm trying to remember what went on that night because it was pretty crazy. I, I, I basically asked uh, Haig Shahidi if all the numbers were in the right boxes. They admitted they were all in the right boxes. We had a three hundred thousand dollar shortfall in revenue. Okay, we had a one seventy nine in expenditures over, and the theme that came out of it was we had controls in place. We didn't have controls in place in thirteen and fourteen, and we probably still don't today. I would disagree with you respectfully, Mr. Kesson. We're talking apples and oranges. And I understand the whole discussion about the $600,000, but this is something completely different. This is money that was put in the wrong account. In the end, the books balance. The books if are I always going to balance. The books are always going to balance on the general fund, never on the operating yearly budget. Right, because it's a, there are, because that's just what she was saying. Yes. It all goes back to the fund balance. It all goes. But, but why correct. have a budget then? Why even have a budget then? Well, I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to go there. <laughs> so. <that's> the, <laughs> So the town operates with a deficit in those accounts. It doesn't mean that the town necessarily had, has a deficit. It just means that if I've overdrawn my checking account and I have the money in the savings account, um, my checking account is overdrawn. But, here's but I don't have to put money back in that check account if I don't want to. It's wrong. 
But I, that's well, essentially what we've been doing. A political move would do that, right? It comes into an election year. You'd want more in your. You'd want to have a savings. You'd want to have more in your, you know, to transfer into your fund balance at the end. Who, who knows why it was done? I don't right. know why it's done. There is. Uh, I'm one of those guys. I'm a politician. Got an R on. But it's the wrong thing to do. I, I get like that. I, said, I can't speak to why it was done. I can only tell you what, what happened. But it all started with a very simple clerical error that never got fixed. I think it's way more than that. I think it's a very. It, there was turmoil in the finance department. There was one point one million dollars that did not get transferred to the right account, and there was a road. There was road money that was budgeted that never got transferred out of the general fund into the capital fund. So these errors came. It was a perfect storm. You have two funds with deficits that are but going. One is surfaced, and it's been there. It's been in front of us since. Right, and I haven't seen the one. I haven't seen the one in the capital projects yet. And you won't see that until we spend down the money on the police station. So that means, and I think I asked you this, as the bond money came in in February for the police station, are you going to set that up in a separate capital? Of Correct. Uh, we already have. So that we've got ten million for the police station, and the other two and a half yeah, even get the even get their own assignments. For the police station, will go there. So obviously, it will, and I'll, I'll discuss some of that when I get to my recommendations. So, and again, the uh, next slide, please. So in May, uh, the answer to the discrepancies and the adjustments that had to be made in the audit were explained uh, due to the significant turnover of personnel in the finance department. Next slide, please. So there was lax adherence to government accounting standards. Management appeared to either be disengaged or unaware of the turmoil that was happening in the finance department. But management was aware of how important it was to have a significant fund balance growth uh, to get the AAA bond rating. Next slide, please. So what do I recommend? We need to track capital projects in separate fund lines, and we've already started doing that, so that it can be easy to see. It's very, it's, it's extremely difficult to go back in time and break out these bonds and these capital projects and track the money spent on each project. So for instance, in years 2012, 13, if we bonded money to buy a DPW truck, I can, I can go to the yard and I can see that the truck was bought, but it's very difficult to track it because back then we were taking all the capital funds and they were putting it in one account. So under the heading of town capital accounts and school, pro school capital projects, you will now see it, they're broken out. So if we bond money for the police station, if we bond money for a compactor, whatever we're going to bond money for, you're going to see that. So then you're going to be able to see that money drawn down. So if a, if a particular project is going over or under, it'll be very easy. Uh, it, it, almost immediately you'll, you'll see uh, what's happening in those accounts, and we can take corrective measures. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I ca almost came to the same conclusion. There's one piece I think you're missing. So that happens to be the seven of us sitting in front of you. Because if you looked at every ordinance that we generated and bonded money, we gave you the headache. We borrowed 562 back when we did the ordinance in 13. It was for the roads. It was for the to repair the town hall. It was to buy a DPW truck. And then we morphed it one more time and we allowed it to be a school building. So when this council, all right, <coughs> authorizes money for bonding, they should never authorize a sum of money at both sides of the street, and it'll help your accounting. And, that, and that's the analysis I got from looking at your stuff. I'd like you to go back and look at that, but I think when you look at the 2013 bond and the 130 or whatever it was, there's one of them, yep. and it includes the road bond. Correct. We actually put money the same money to be able to be spent on both sides of the street that gives the finance department a headache and we've never heard about it okay. and they've done a very good job of doing it the one thing the next thing I want to ask you is when you get to when you get to 99 on your account balances 
and you don't think you can go to 100, are we not using a, uni a uniform charge of a, uh, charter, account. charter accounts? We are. Uh, but there's when we went to that system and instituted the new uh, uh, Phoenix software system, the new accounting software system, it was discovered. And, and Jim Lathrop did report this uh, about a year ago, or so, a little, year and a half ago. There are lots of accounts that need to be cleaned up because they didn't transfer over. So there are, there are accounts, the account codes, like I say, go all the way up to 99, right? The 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 sixteen the the sixteen seventeen CIP projects for the school were assigned that fund code ninety eight because she didn't have any more numbers. We will fix that, but that explains why it happened and it, and it has a separate series number, so it's very easy to track. But when you see the fund ninety eight, people think warrant gets a charge to warrant, and uh, that that's confusing. That's that's a, most of the, the the conclusion I came to. The problem is, is I again when I looked at your recommendations, unfortunately you didn't blame the seven of us sitting in front of you, because we can't authorize money for both sides of the street, because I think it gives the accounting a problem. And when we point. make an ordinance, we ought to correct that. Well, the ordinance is specifically drawn out to say what each yeah. piece is for. Right, and and in the ordinance where we borrowed for the road money, we included the school in it. Which was well, like we confused. Well, which is like confused. And they ended up doing for that year. Obviously, that the school warrant that was a Ryback loan, even though it was all covered under the same ordinance. Right. right. I, I see exactly where you're coming from, and this is what I'm asking that we do, and I've directed the finance department to do uh, in the future. You know, for instance, when you pass a warrant, you you tell us, and in all years past, you've told the finance department this warrant is up to including this amount of money. And this amount of money is uh, for the trucks, and this amount of money is for roads, this amount of money is for roofs. But and then it all went into one pot. And I, yeah, and I couldn't figure that out. And that's why it took. Maybe I want a second. Mr. Ray, it's, it's the school's money. Um, Either way. Second recommendation would be uh, that we transfer the amount of money that is deficit in that warrant out of the town capital and zero out that warrant. Then I would uh, recommend, and I've cleared this through uh, the Auditor General, I've steer, cleared it through the uh, Depart Department of Revenue and Municipal Finance, uh, and I've talked to uh, our finance director uh, here and at the school and other towns. Um, I would recommend, so we get a handle on this, zero out the negative, uh, the deficits, and put it in one account. And then, apply a percentage of any future fund surpluses and apply that towards that deficit account until we liquidate that amount. And why is that your recommendation? Because to make it easy to track because some of these, some of these uh, deficits, there's some, there's a couple thousand dollars here, there. I don't know what they were spent on. And it's very difficult. We could sit there and say, well, just leave them where they are, leave the, the warrant as it is, let the town capital fund go to negative. But I think it would just be easier accounting wise and more clear to the council if you see one account that is being paid down over time. I, I don't like the method of paying down, which was the reason I voted against the budget last year, because I really think it needs a debt service applied to it be in case we don't have a fund balance. There's a difficulty. We cannot borrow funds to pay debt. I understand that, but it's only an accountant thing, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to go there. It's or, uh, or it's a, a clerical error at the moment. What, what, right. Whatever it is, we have a deficit that we have to get rid of. Right, now, and that's why I wanted and to... Ga Gaspy has told us, or that there are, our auditors have told us that we have to do it. We're quote, aware that we have to do it, but we just haven't done so, it. So here's the situation that we're in. None of this has been hidden from the auditors, and none of this is unknown to the bond agents, rating agencies. They are very aware of this. As a matter of fact, from 2015 on, there's been a sentence in every audit that talks about this deficit, and we will have a plan to pay it down. Right. When I talk to our bond council, when I talk to the state auditor general, and the former state auditor general, there is, if we decide 
Now, I didn't, I didn't float the idea of bonding the money because we, is, I don't want to play tricks. We should not borrow money to pay debt. So, what, do we really kind of have three choices. One of which is unpalatable, we do nothing. We just let the checking account stay in debt negative and overdrawn. Two, we could take the money that's been sitting in our fund balance and take the money out of the fund balance, draw the fund balance down, and just zero it out now. So if we do that, the bond rating, rating. agencies will take notice, and so there's no guarantee, but the, we could uh, damage our current bond rating. But that's so <laughs> if the bond, if the if the fund balance includes all the negative accounts, it does. right? It already includes the minus two million dollars. What difference does it make? Because the bond, because the general fund, including these capital funds that just look like clerical errors to me, and, and I'm exaggerating, maybe some of it isn't, um, or, or an error that was made, and I, and I see in the ledger where we've made an error issuing a check, but then we see in, uh, where it's been corrected. Um, I don't understand that if we have, if we're worth $60 million, including the negative fund balance in this 12-13 warrant, if we just made that go away, you're still, the way auditors like it, which I don't like the way they do their math, all right, the general fund account is still going to be the same amount of money because it's taking care of this $2 million debt. Because as the auditor but you draw says, down, it you, goes back to the you fund draw balance. down the fund balance, and the fund balance is the key to your bond rating. So our fund balance is fake. It's not that it's, it's real money. But not if we I, owe two million dollars. I understand exactly where you're coming from, that, but it is real money. Yes. I understand all of that. Okay. I understand all of that. And so, I, I again. All I can state to you is my best recommendation based on the study that I put into this and based on uh, extensive interviews with people who are a lot smarter on this than I am. If we draw down the fund balance that fast, it will, bond rating agencies will take notice and it could affect our bond rating. So you want to draw it down a little at a time? We draw it down a little at a time. No, not Why? No, wait, because wait, wait. that's, well, the fund we're not, surplus. We're not, we're we don't not. grow it as fast. As don't grow it as fast. Doing. Okay, I'm sorry. So, okay, backwards. Got it. Got and the it. reason why is we're, because we're that down the deficit for the last the four years, if we have, that's what we've been we telling have. the auditors, and therefore, by, by fait accompli, the bond rating agencies, that's what we told them we were going to do. That's what you told them you were going to do when? That's been in every audit since, since 14 or 15. No, no, it just said there's going to be a plan, but it didn't really say what the plan was. It, it said that we would pay it uh, through... Uh, uh, general fund balances or surpluses, I can't remember the whole sentence, uh, uh, some through fund, drawing down the fund balance, um, uh, borrowing, blah, blah, it said a number of things. I have another question. Those, those funds that uh, Mr. Lathrop presented to us, um, you know, the ones I was talking, we were Correct. talking, there, the, one that I've, the ones that I'm always like, you yes. know. Cemetery the Sherman fund, fund, yeah. the, the Sherman yeah. fund, the cemetery fund. Were those fund? funds borrowed against? No. So no. that money is still sitting there. That right. money is still sitting there because most of those are restricted yeah, accounts. Yeah, I know. Yeah, all right. Mr. President, one Mr. more question. Yep. So, so in 2016 and 17, we just loaded, according to the audit, from the best of my recollection, another 232000 against this account. Was that another clerical error? No, that's what I was trying to explain. That money was sitting in Fund 99, and then as it's needed, it gets drawn out. But to record those, Fung put those, um, our, our Deputy Finance Director gave that a fund code of 98 Series 700 or whatever it was. To distinguish it from the To distinguish it from everything else. Yeah. So those were appropriate. I mean, the money was budgeted. School had the money. Uh, those were valid charges against that account. But because it had that two-digit fund code 98, it got lumped in with the 1213 warrant, which also has the two-digit fund code 98. Which is why you want to create so, which that Which is why other I want to separate account. it out. Right. Any other questions? Um, this is uh, the item just for the council's knowledge. 
the item is listed as discussion, so we can't take any action this evening. Yes. But is we'll this the back. last page of the PowerPoint? Yes, ma'am. And, and can I get a copy of this PowerPoint, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so Mr. Rayner, this, oh, okay. You have it electronically, right? Yes, I'll forward it to you via email as well. Thank okay. you. A couple questions. Absolutely. Everything in this PowerPoint was in the package that you already sent us and is available. Oh, the information, the, the PowerPoint in was No, there. I know the PowerPoint wasn't, but the information is contained. Correct. The numbers okay. are all the same. And okay. also, what is, what is the harm to the town if there isn't a surplus and we don't apply a percentage in a year? None. It's just one year that you don't put money into the, if we establish this deficit account. It, this has not hurt the town. Not only did we get our bond rating in 14, we got it reaffirmed in 16, and we got another one in 17. So uh, this has not hurt the town. But at some point, we need to zero out these deficits and correct uh, the error that was made uh, back in uh, 13. Because it doesn't give a true picture. That's right. I, I can't speak to the accounting methods. It uh, I stayed at a Holiday Inn once. Yeah. But so, so, hang on. Ms. Ujifusa, you're going to finish. I, I just want to say that you know, I want to thank Mr. Rayner because this is an, an impressive amount of research and analysis. And these were really very complex historical events to try to understand. And I think it wasn't just the simple question Mr. Kesson asked about why there was an increase in this year's audit amount. I mean, it was a historical analysis that you had to determine what was done by whom, why, or try to determine why. And I, I just want to say that um, this is the take home message for me, that after reading all of Mr. Rayner's research, um, these actions took place, the ones that really have made our financial documents mis misleading, frankly, occurred under the tenure of a previous town administrator. And although Mr. Kesson would qualify some of these things as clerical errors, I don't know. Maybe we'll never know. However, we cannot forget the fact that it was Mr. Rayner who managed to do this unbelievable amount of research to figure this out, and it confirms my prior belief that he not only deserved the extension of his contract, but the town is very fortunate to have the services of a decorated military officer whose honesty, integrity, and work ethic have been crucial to fixing the myriad of problems that have been left by his predecessor, who I have done some research on and I have found has had this very similar problems relating to budgets, including the fact that he has mentioned on order, several Mr. occasions order, Mr. The Mr. Jifusa, we're not going to we're not going to let's avoid smearing previous well i'm just uh, i'm just yeah, shocked listen. i'm shocked let's, and let's, I, I i really feel that fine. there's a, been a lot of discussion around right. problems current problems when these problems were historical and Mr. i just President, want that to be absolutely crystal clear okay. we had basic clerical errors we had lack of controls where somebody made an entry. We don't care who it is. I, I commend you for the work you did. I tried to do the same thing in four days. It's not possible. That's I got close. Yeah, that's why I took too because much. Of my, because of the investigation I have, and you know I can talk to what you're talking about. The problem I have is our controls going forward. So if we have Mr. Kesson in your finance department and I enter the wrong account number, I'm not confident yet that I could accept the bill, pay the bill against the wrong account number and not find it till the audit comes. I don't know what internal controls are in, in, your, in, in the Phoenix software that if I enter it, somebody else has to check it. I can and and those are the internal <laughs> controls. It's, it's in, in, in my world, which you were in, security, there are, there are permissions. I can enter a bill, but I can't pay it. I don't know what's in Phoenix, because that's where some of this would have gotten caught. I can only say uh, we have had, uh, since I've been here, uh, the audits have been clean without findings. 
Um, we have uh, conducted extensive training in the finance department. Um, we've established a close relationship between the two finance departments in a town and the school side. Uh, and we have hired uh, very professional staff uh, that are diligent in executing their fiduciary responsibility to the town. Um, and that will continue under my watch. Ms. Hader. Mr. Rayner, did you, um, did you have Markham look into this? Yes, I brought Markham in. Uh, we went through all the ledgers. Uh, they came to the same conclusion uh, that I did. Would, can you, oh, that's a revelation. That was is, Mr. Is there, I is there brought in Mr. Wilkinson to review this. Is there a reason you didn't use the auditor we used for the audit? Because Mr. Because uh, Mr. Wilkinson was the one who conducted these audits. And when I talked to the State Auditor General, he said one of the first things you should do is bring in your auditor who did these audits, review your findings with them, and see if he agrees. And, and what was the cost of this? The zero cost of the town. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Mr. Fitzwash, you got a question? Thank you, Mr. President. This is a very complicated matter. Um, I doubt that anybody's been able to follow it who may be watching this. I'd like to have uh, the PowerPoint, please, placed on the uh, town's website, if that's possible. Um, give, give us to Wednesday, because they won't be here tomorrow. Well, I understand yeah. that. Okay. And you won't be getting your disc tomorrow, either. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, <clears throat> but one control I would suggest for, is an amateur sitting in the back here is, and it's bothered me since we've been having this discussion when Mr. Custom first brought it forward, we should never have an account that goes negative without somebody looking at that and coming up with an excuse as to why that's a problem. <clears throat> because we really don't have negative accounts here, as far as I can tell. And um, that should have been a red flag way back when. And year after year after year, we do have this on the books that was running as a negative number and um, you know there's, there's a lot of a lot of things here to digest and certainly uh, I need some more time with it thank you thank you sir any other questions for mr. Rayner um, so what we would need to do is once you guys have all had a chance everybody's had a chance to digest it more read through it all I've, is come back at a future meeting and decide on that last recommendation of Mr. Rainers, I got one question. Based on the based on the five hundred thousand, which was the nugget that got lost, we had we had we had put the five hundred thousand in from the bond. Correct. It never got transferred in from the town until the following year. Till, till the following year in Ju well, in June. In June, it sounded like from the audit and the findings they had that they put it in. The problem is, is when you put it in in the following year, right? Because it had happened in October of. 15 it it looked like we put a million dollars into the road bond and it really should have been a million and a half <clears throat> um, yeah the, well the five hundred thousand was five hundred thousand dollars should have gone in from the year before but because it was put in in 15 and 15 only required 15 for the road bond that five hundred dollars evaporated somewhere but no, that five hundred thousand dollars went into the town capital fund correct but the next year was supposed to have been a million that's correct, and of that cash. never got transferred of in. Cash. That's the reason why that And it didn't get a million and a half, it only got a million. Well, it should have only got a million. The 500 did go in, the million never did, never did not go in, and that fund balance promptly went from 27000 in the positive to over $900,000 in the negative. I'll keep looking at this data. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Do I have a, a motion to receive this report and place it on file? So, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. Rayner, thank you very much. Next up, we have uh, new business discussion and action request revision of fee, wa fee waiver schedules, I tried to say. First up, Madam Clerk, annual licenses for you.
Um, for the state, there are maximums that we can charge. Um, the highlighted accounts are the ones that we're requesting an increase on. Um, so for instance, for the capacity liquor license, right now we charge $1,700. The maximum is $2,000. We'd like to request that we can increase that amount. Um, same with the um, ancillary um, Class B. Um, the Class B H and the B T. Um, the B H is a maximum of only five hundred dollars, and um, the B T can only is combined with the B H and can only go until um, two thousand dollars total between those two. Um, which is why we're, we're only requesting the um, we're requesting fifteen hundred. On the, um, the so it'll go the max so the up max. to yeah. Exactly. So um, we've gone through, like I said, we've compared with other cities and towns. Um, the state is is you know with the um, statutes very specific on how much we can charge up to. And like I said, it's been about 20 years since they've done any update. So my only question was, why do we have to go straight to the max from the 17? Why not? We're just taking a shot. Okay. Right. Those are I'm our, just asking a question. Those are our suggestions. Um, They're flexible. So. Oh. Mm -hmm. And specifically for everyone, the money that's collected here goes to where? Fund your office. Fund our office, but it also goes yep. to the state. Yep. So. That going to the state part is what concerns me. They don't do a very good job with managing money. Not that apparently that we do over the past half hour, but yeah. What what's what's the uh, how much goes to where? Is it 50 50, 60 40? So so if so we we'll make be this more money for the yeah, if we made this request, if we add three hundred dollars. As is requested, ballpark, the town gets 50 and the state gets 250. Is it? Mm. Well, so how does this compare to other towns? Yeah, yeah. Again, if it was being spent here. I, that's that's my concern. It can't, for me to be comfortable, can you just come back with us at the next meeting? This does not this doesn't happen until December first, anyways, right? Well, it should be in the budget, yeah, right? Um, yeah, it is a budget item. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. That, President, I mean, it's obviously we're in the final stages of the budget preparation, so we're trying to mm -hmm. forecast. Right. So we have, I'm just going to give a wild guess off the top of my head, 32 liquor licenses in town? So it's just a wild guess. So, so, so we're talking about 1500 bucks mm -hmm. if we go to the max. I, I just... Yeah, it's not a lot of money. It, well, it's not that it's not a lot of money. I'm just... It's, it's $1,500 for us as a town. It's... Fifteen thousand dollars, or whatever the number is, six thousand dollars for the state. That, quite <coughs> honestly, I just don't trust them managing properly. Well, um, I would just, man, this is just me talking. I would just feel more comfortable if, at the next meeting, you, you could definitively tell me that the town gets one hundred and fifty, and the state gets one hundred and fifty. But I'm only one person. Any other comments or questions on the? On yeah, I'm not. I'm not comfortable going all the way to, to the max. Um, I'd like to know the breakdown before I voted. Um, so, under this, do you want to? We can you, table the, the clerk's a, item until. Move it to the next. Move it to meeting. the next meeting. Is that it? Is that your motion? That's my motion. What information are we waiting for? To see what the breakdown is between the state and the town split. 
specifically. No second. Okay. Is there any further discussion on this one? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Next up, we have building inspection, correct? There we go. Just want to make sure I was in the right order. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. This The, the state is um, engaging in a program of trying to standardize building permit fees throughout <coughs> the state. Um, in, in, unlike the previous set of fees, all of these funds stay with us, uh, at least for the time being. This, this is... Um, this, this represents a, a slight increase <coughs> for, um, for our permittees. Um, uh, in kind of an odd way, actually, um, uh, uh, Gareth worked out a kind of, worked out a, um, how, how the change would, adopting these fees, what, how it would change. Current, if somebody wants to put on a new deck, $7,000 deck, um, these adopting these fees, the permit to us would go from 117 to 156, 39 dollar increase. We haven't increased our building permit fees for quite some time, so this is an opportunity to do so, and it's an opportunity to do it um, so that it is um, uh, compliant with the, the 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 proposed statewide permitting fees. <coughs> Um, a new addition to an $85,000 new addition, the permit fee would go from $454, $445 to $890, so it would be about a $300, $345 increase. A kitchen res renovation, oddly enough, is only about a $20 increase, but for a brand new, for a new home, the total permit fee, $450,000 home, the permit fee now is twenty six hundred and fifty five bucks and it would go up to forty one hundred so it'd be about a fifteen hundred dollar increase but these like I said we haven't um, increased our building permit fees <coughs> from quite some time and this is an opportunity for us to uh, uh, increase both increase those fees and to make them um, uh, um, in, in compliant with what the state the statewide permitting fee schedule is we're on the low side and compared yeah. to the other towns yes, too we aren't are. we uh, Mr. Crosby, what was the first scenario? Um, the first scenario was putting on a new deck. Seven thousand dollars. Seven thousand bucks, and the permit, the current permit to do that would be one hundred and seventeen bucks, and it would go up to one hundred and fifty-six. So basically, you have to take uh, seven thousand times twelve, and then add the sixty-five dollar minimum fee. Is that an addition? Uh, to it? I'm not sure how that, how he calculated it. Yeah, there's a base fee. The project fee and then the state a state ADA fee on top of all of these things. So okay. yes, that's clear as mud. Yeah, that's about how I look at it too. Yeah, but it, it is an increase. It's not a significant increase, and it's an opportunity for us to increase uh, building per uh, building permit fees that we haven't taken for quite some time. Mr. Cassie, and what do we believe the total revenue would be? Um, I haven't. I don't know. Don't know. I think that would fluctuate year to year. Sure. Yeah. But it. But it's a nom. It's a nominal number over the last three years of permitting, right? Well, we uh, we didn't go back and look at that. Okay. Though. Thank you. We have seen an increase in building permits over the last two years or so, but they were very low for quite some time, all through you know. 2009 to yeah up yeah. until 2013 14 yeah. perhaps okay. is there a motion to accept or approve or deny either way motion to approve mr. Crosby's suggestion Second. all those in favor aye, aye. 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 any opposed motion passes six to one mr. Kessen opposed and then uh, increasing the Glenn fee schedule which I do not see Wendy here but uh, we're looking at the, she doesn't put what it is now that's the thing no way did yeah. mr. Randy do you have those in front of you I have hers uh, right now I think all we charge um, for full facility use is the 850 okay 
And so what she, she did is she went to neighboring towns that have facilities like this, particularly Bristol and so oh, on. So, so they're forth. all 850. Yeah, so um, all of that would be 850. Gotcha. And, uh, <coughs> you know, so, so, so for instance, you get a beast to the east. There's yep. No, the beast to the east was $1,500. Well, was it 50? Yeah, I they, think you're they, right. I think they, it's 850 and then it goes to 1500. Except for the Caps out at 1500. Right. So that would have been my question. Does that go up for them? Which, you know, I believe it should. No, well, we've. It's we, they've already right. got a contract, so it would go up the following Next year. Okay. Year. <coughs> and again, all this money goes back into the recreation department to help pay for the fields and everything else into a restricted account. Another question. Ms. Ujifusa, yes. It, are we charging more for people who are outside of Portsmouth? No, we don't distinguish uh, outside, inside. No. Uh, what we do typically, though, is uh, in the past for uh, inside, uh, generally they'll ask for a fee waiver and then there'll be a recommendation to the town uh, if they've asked for one and then it's up to the council to either approve or deny a fee waiver. But it's youth sporting events specifically for kids in Portsmouth don't get charged. It's when a youth sporting group has an outside event where they bring people, large numbers of groups from other towns. They would get charged these fees. So, for instance, uh, you know, the lacrosse uh, group, whatever, um, you know, even though, you know, Marshall Higgins is a local guy, runs that in Portsmouth, uh, many of the, uh, the users of that camp and, and that league are from outside of Portsmouth. They're, I mean, they're all over. So. Mr. Kazan? Thank you very much. Does, is, does anybody use the beach as a whole? Because that fee schedule is not on here. Is do we not have that used? Uh, I don't we, think we've ever rented out the beach, I, not on since I've been here. I, I know the beach has been used a couple of times. Uh, girls soccer has used it a couple of times for their um, Sandy Hook event. Yeah, when a Sandy Hook aware. soccer team comes in, they have a yeah, barbecue down I there, and that's know. the only thing I, that I'm aware of that's ever been rented for or specifically utilized for. When, well, when Fourth and View Sailing was there for a couple of years and things like I that. I just didn't know. I didn't, you know, being the beach, and yeah. it's included under this rec department. There was no, but there was no uh, fee schedule. Uh, if there's cleanup, there's no money to charge for it. If somebody left it a wreck, I mean, I think it, it, we it, ha it hasn't come across <coughs> as. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's I haven't seen it come across as a request. Address. I mean, I, what I'd like to do is, you know, if we can settle on Glen Farm, I can ask uh, uh, Wendy to take a look at uh, possibilities regarding the beach. I mean, it's. If we were ever asked to rent it out again for those events, I know that beach volleyball is becoming a big thing, and she's been talking to me about it. Perhaps uh, we could do a fee schedule for that. Is there a motion to approve the uh, motion new to fees? approve yeah. the fee schedule for Glen Farm special events? Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes seven zero. Next up, we have our correspondence. We have a, a request to modify the design review board guidelines, a letter of thanks from Project Regive, a, a notification of the 2018 Merit Neighborhood Fund applications through the Quinnick Island Land Trust, the quarterly report for the Portsmouth Water and Fire District, and Gray Matter Marketing let us know there are a couple of events that will impact Portsmouth that they work with the police department on, which are the bridge run and also there's a bike race I you believe in there as well right um, an invitation to the St. Patty's Day Parade Saturday bring your galoshes uh, oh, it's supposed to be nice, supposed to be nice. <laughs> uh, I just hope hopefully the snow's gone by then invitation to attend a community information session with National Grid for on island project which is the uh, process of going down the middle of uh, the island to upgrade those poles and a request to attend and purchase or become a sponsor for the 13th annual Turning Around Ministry Dinner Silent Auction. And do we have a motion to do anything with any of those? Mr. I, I'd like to see the, uh, the first one. Yeah, to give too. Mr. Getzinger his opportunity. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, it, it, this was addressed to me and obviously CC to the whole council. What I did with this letter, the Design Review Board reports to the Planning Board I forwarded it to Guy Bissonette uh, for action, and uh, we have reached out to Mr. Getzinger um, to discuss this. And he, his issue right now is uh, whether they can declare a quorum or not. 
uh, under their guidelines, they can declare a quorum if the quorum is based on five because they've had two unfilled seats for a number of years. Then they are working hard to fill those seats. So it's a seven member committee typically? Uh, it was originally five. set up a seven member before a number of years that they've been two members short and it has been consistently advertised. We're working hard. We have a line on one person uh, who may be interested. But I, I think that because this is a, an advisory committee to the planning board, it'd be more appropriate for the planning board to uh, take action on this letter. Uh, Mr. President, I, I also want to add that I, I spoke to Mr. Getz, Getzingen and we discussed the fact that the problem lies in a recruitment issue that it's what just been recruitment. Recruitment. Oh, recruitment it's just been very hard to get people sure. to want to serve that um, and he understands that and I don't believe that he wants to appear before the council to discuss okay. this he understands we're working on trying to get more people to apply all right then I decline that uh, recommendation just keep it in the back of your head and yeah if it becomes an issue motion I mean, place on file all um, seven okay. second all those in favor Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. Eight, sorry, all eight. My bad. All eight. Uh, future meetings, we have our regularly scheduled meeting on the 26th. We have an executive session in the morning of the 31st. And we have our regularly scheduled meeting on the 9th. And then we start into our sessions of budget hearings after that. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. The fire department agrees. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed?